Audio Frontier. This is Football Daft with Stephen Purden. Midfield Dynamo and average actor. Chris Toll. Target man. Suspicious character. And... Football Daft, the daftest Scottish football podcast around. My name's Stephen Purden and let's welcome the squad. First, a man who this week was sent to test drive the buses. It's Auto Man himself, it's Grado. What was that? Oh, um, I'm actually not even allowed to say, but basically I was learning how to uh, drive Oh, is it, is it pure, pure, pure showbiz, man? Is the other rap, man? But basically I spent the day, yesterday, man, it was amazing. Because I've always wanted to be a bus driver. I know you've heard me say I've always wanted to be a pilot. I've always wanted to be a wrestler. But see, my first... Right, see, when I was young, mate, you have no idea. I was obsessed with buses, right? I played buses in my grand's bedroom until I was about fucking 14, 15 year old. I loved it. <laughs> and my, my uncle Jimmy, my uncle Jimmy stayed with my grand, right? And what I would right. do is I'd tell my grand I was away, kind of like, right, I'm away in your bedroom. But I'd sneak into my uncle Jimmy's, put on his shirt and tie. Right, get my gran, mm-hmm. my granny's brown washing basket and sit and play buses and do like the full route. I would do a draw some Chapel Hill Mount in my head all the way up to Kilmarnock. I'd right, even so make up... basically you just sitting in a basket, like, like so no, sitting in the a basket. The basket was a steering wheel, mate. The basket was a steering Aye. wheel. And I used yeah, to like get my dad to uh, check all the, the bus yards to try and get me a, a real steering wheel. But I never ever got one. Like, I, I wanted to be a bus driver, right? So right. yesterday I went to one of the biggest bus stations that you've ever seen in your life, right? And I walked in and I got the uniform and I sat at the cafeteria and I had a pie and sat with all these bus drivers, man, and I pure blended right in, man. Nobody batted an eyelid. <laughs> and I got a wee lesson and everything. I was driving a single decker, mate. A single decker. Mate, I can't, mate, you pure, do you know, like, don't take this the wrong way, right, but you pure look like a bus driver. Mate, I know. You I, do. You look I'm like a bus driver. I'm not taking offence to that. No, I'm not taking offence. Like, I came off set yesterday. I was filming, I came off set. And I just had like all these messages and all that about you bus driving and all that. And I'm like, what's going on? I mean, I genuinely thought the lockdown had got to you. <laughs> you just got, <laughs> no, I thought you'd got a job as a bus driver. <laughs> well, I would do it. And you don't get me back I... on showbiz. <laughs> <laughs> It was funny, man, because like all the, all, all the kind of, there was like the wee, the wee office woman, she was saying I was like built like a, a bus driver and all that. She yeah, had, yeah. She, she says I had the right figure for it, right? <laughs> but see how the guy that was, see the guy that was training me, obviously it was for like a filming thing, right? But I was right. telling him I was right in there and he was taking, taking it serious, like, mate, if you want to apply, man. He was gone. <laughs> he was gone. He was gone. <laughs> Doing a hard sell. Hi, he's gone. The pie's no bad. He's like... He goes and you've took flexible levels. <laughs> he was going. He was going. You've took it, neighbor. <laughs> he goes. Some folk come in here and crumble, man. Like I was doing. Oh, you know, because uh, you know, you, you drive it. Uh, you drive it, and your shoulder uh, matches the curb, and that's when you start turning. You've got to remember that. Remember, see your bus. Your bus doesn't have an engine in the front like your car, so you've got Aye. loads of room at the front, man. Aye. It's just amazing Aye. learning it all. It was such a buzz. And he was going, mate, you can do uh, weekend work and all that. And I'm going, cool, <laughs> do, you know, man, do you know what? Ryan, producer Ryan, see him? See when this guy saying this to him? I know what he'd have been like. Do you know what, mate? I, I might think about it, man. I, 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 might, I, I could do it. I mean, see the way my, my, my work is? I could do things at the weekend. I could do it. You're digging a hole, man. He probably left his, he left his... <laughs> I'm telling you, I bet you thought on an application form. <laughs> I bet you. <laughs> uh, mate, I was no, mate, and that's also, good, man. I, that's good. And also, uh, I, I, got, I got to take the uniform him, man. I pure walked into my bud, man. Like a pure sexy bus driver. I was like, how you doing, man? <laughs> is that such that's, a thing? That, that's one on an action. What is it they say with the bus driver say? Is that one on an action? <laughs> this is something I don't know. <laughs> What's that bus driver hang right Driver, you know? driver. Is it this one? No, it's the next one. Aye, aye, that's what they say. What other bus driver things do folks say? I don't know. My dad usually just walks in. He's he's working. Just ask folk for team to support me. <laughs> Sorry, <I'm laughs> aye, there was all that talk. There was all that talk. I, I get banter with him. I get a good good banter with aye. him. So I did. But anyway, that's my 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 bus driving experience coming soon to uh yes to a television screen or a radio show near you soon. We don't know. We will just have to wait and see. But on to other news. Where is Chris Toll? Where is he? Well, I didn't know that he was on. You didn't have a fucking clue. <laughs> <laughs> There's no point asking you. You didn't even check the group chat. You thought he was coming on today. I know. What's the deal? What's the fellow it was? 
Jerusalem at Jeru. Ah, ah, I don't care. Rich you anymore, Jeru. Right, that's boys, man. Ah. I... I think the listeners will think that you and Tol don't like each other, man. It's been quite, it's been quite oh, kind of. I've enjoyed it, man. That's it's been, been quite heated, heated but it's, it's getting personal, man. Because that picture. How's it getting me, personal? Just, I don't think you should have said that last night when he. he, he said, <laughs> <laughs> you fucking joking? No, I've he, said, I've said he, sent, you. he sent a selfie into the group chat, and you were going, "You're disgusting and all that." Oh, I don't know. Now, now we can elaborate and divulge what the selfie was because it would make him look even worse than what you're trying to see I make him look. But it wasn't just your average selfie. Why are you feel to say what he was doing? Right, I will say it then. Right, he, well. was sitting there, he was sitting there in a shite. <laughs> right, right, Ryan thought he was in the bath. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe he was doing bath. <laughs> right, he was, sit, he was sitting on the lavy pan and I said that thought he was disturbing and Ryan said he thought he was in the bath. <laughs> Anyway, so, I, I, I don't I, know where he is. I don't know I, why he's he's, he's just copying us, Barney. <laughs> no, you asked for a wee calf a couple of weeks ago, and, that, aye, and aye. I had one. And um, look, John's pure. Don't know what John's up to these days. <laughs> John's, John's fucking working on open goal now. <laughs> <laughs> that's right, so Sai, that's great, Sai. Is Slaney coming today, Sai? <laughs> <laughs> Andy, Andy, just go for the top there again, Andy. Fuck off, John. <laughs> this is he's always trying to go. This is he's always trying to go. No, the old Falkirk players, not that. This is oh, he's always trying to get. Kevin fucking... McAllister, ah, didn't you? Ah, the Falkirk legends, that. Aye, right, Sai, Sai, I've got a good, I've got, a, I've got a player here, Sai, Sai. Can we get Crunchy on? Get Crunchy on. <laughs> is that, is that... Crunchy. <laughs> oh, he was a hardy. Oh, he was a hardy. <laughs> That's so funny, man. No, but I don't know where John, John's still busy doing the biggest project that's ever happened in Scottish radio or something. Now. I like Totten. I like Totten. I like Totten. Toll doesn't say what he's doing. He just said he's really busy this week. So, yeah. Right, Scottish football this week. What's been happening? Scotland qualified for the Euros and we, myself, Ryan, Toll, John, sat up and get pissed and done a wee special podcast for Scotland Daft, but you are probably into your third door's kit. Are you radio, kidding me on? You've done a radio. Scotland Daft. <laughs> when? The night we qualified at like quarter past twelve at night. You're joking, ditches. No, we did. We Why am I, I'm that, mate. Hey, I wouldn't mind, but I didn't. I didn't know you'd done that. How'd you just ask me? We did. Fuck it, we did. did. You should have the You just didn't need to chat again. All right, okay. Aye. So what did he you say? were either watching the Sopranos or the Hearts documentary, or just fucking <laughs> like flicking, flicking through old videos of yourself on YouTube or something. Me likely to be that, mate. <laughs> That's my I know, because he said. Stephanie, see, I'm not fucking watching videos of you all night. Remember that video you sent us last week? Hey, any t- no, any- Graham, I'm not doing. I'm not doing fucking Grado videos all night. It's fucking ridiculous, man. See, any time I get a drink in me, see, I'd say about about two hours into it, and that, I'd be like that with the with the with the remote <laughs> hovering YouTube like that. Just one, man. I'll just put on this one. I've not showed you this one yet. <laughs> Grado, at least you've got like good videos of yourself wrestling. That all I do is look for myself on the WWE Network and just see if I pop up in the crowd. Or oh, the Zoom. Oh, hi. <laughs> Wait, yeah. Oh no, should I say that? Should I talk about my hang? No, no, I'll not do it. I'll wait till it's announced. Wait till, wait, I wait till it's off. Wait till it's I, I can't fucking spunk my wood, man, on this. No, but mate, you're like, you're sitting there, like, with that video you sent us, man, I felt, felt a bit sorry for Stephanie, man, because I could see, like, I know it's like working with you quite a lot, man, and you, we need to sit and look at videos of you constantly, like, no, just watch us bit. No, Bob, Bob, just watch us bit. Just watch us bit. Can I get that I take folk hostage. I take folk uh, hostage. Are you the do you know what, Sha Samuels out there, if you're listening out there, you're, you're, you're bang on. I'm sure you're an avid listener of football daft. Anyway, anyway Scotland qualified for the Euros. Mate, they qualified for the Euros. We had a baby. No, together. We were sitting in the house and we were in the group chat. Obviously, it was a big game. Remember? Me- no. Remember you left the chat? Done a wee sensational exit for half an hour. <laughs> Aye, what was that again? Because what was that I felt uh, I said? You were asking questions about the qualifiers and all that. We were oh. trying to take you like... Aye. That wound me up, man. That really wound me up. Because you were pure. I like when you... It's all right teasing me that I don't know about football and all that, but that one really pissed me off because I knew you didn't understand what I was talking about. It was basically... Like, I was basically asking, why would this... I didn't think the teams... I didn't think it took till March of the year to qualify. 
So I was thinking, how is it taking this? Do you know, I forget about it. I just made an arse and I get pissed off. Do, do you know that, mate? Do you know that? Right, right. Scotland hasn't qualified for a major tournament since 1998. We're in the middle of the game. It's tense. We're winning. You're like 20 minutes away. And fucking Grado comes in with a fucking atomic bomb trying to get something explained to him, man. And he's went in a half cause we're like, mate, get the fuck. The game's on. And then you left the chat. And do you know what? Nick couldn't care apart from me. That's annoying. <laughs> aye, aye, aye that's, that's not true. I missed him. I missed him. Aye, we all, we all said what happened to Grado, but then Nick did really bored after that. So I had to send you a voice note individually going, what are you doing? And he sends me back, no, nah, mate, I always do this. I always do this. <laughs> Pure tatty turn it round. And then and then I didn't reply to him again. Then he sent his one about ten minutes later. Right, I'm fed up with this now. Get Johnny gets back in it. <laughs> oh, but it was it was a good wee celebration, even if we are the biggest fucking hypocrites in the oh, land. And I had my mate. hands up, man. Mate, mate, there's Ryan good... doing it for he bought a fucking uh, a Scotland Scotland tap ten minutes before kick off. Know what I mean? I mean, yeah. I, I do that regularly. I get right on the bandwagon with something. Total bandwagon jumper. I'm fucking finished wearing them now until the summer. <laughs> <laughs> but it was good. It was, don't get me wrong, right? It felt good and it was good. Jump. Did you jump a bit? No. Oh, did you jump a bit? No, no. Did I you jump a bit, Ryan? I did, I went, did I went mental. High. I, I just went, I was kind of, I was literally on the edge of my seat. See, I know not this, mate, if you've done the Scotland Daft podcast, mm. we've done what I mean, but mm. I was sitting on the edge of my seat. Nick, I was up and doing up and doing, then she come down and end up sitting and watching the rest of it ways. And when Marshall saved that, I did kind of, yes, but I didn't. Aye, it, wasn't I like, it wasn't like Big Goldson scoring the second goal at Park Kid. Yes, jumping a bit mental, you know what I mean? But it was, sorry, Ryan. Aye, that, was was shite, like, that was shite, that was. <laughs> <laughs> but it was like, it was a wee, it's probably the most, it's the most animated I've ever been watching a Scotland game, let's put it that way. Oh, that, no, certainly since I was a Wayne man, I mean, I'd jump about that Aye. front a bit, but... Don't get, I mean, I'll admit I'm a hypocrite because I'm not, I, I don't really bother with international football, but that was, we needed something like that. But because even just like the way the country's been in the last week, man, there's been a bit of a buzz. Everybody's together. You know, we're all kind of wanting to see Scotland do well. There's a song, I Can Boogie. There's just a pure, Huzz lifted the nation, man, that man, so it has. Aye. Then they get pumped aye, twice. Aye. 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 <laughs> <laughs> like the fucking cunt to hang over the wall, man. Is that night the fuck? Telling you, man, they've been rough as fuck. But we're there and it should be a laugh. We're going down to London to play England and all that. So it should be good. Should be good. But, but, but it's, this I, weekend. I see, sorry, sorry just before we go, I, I see folk talking about um, they want to go to Wembley and all that. I don't want it, man. I want to go to Spain. My girl, off and watch it in a Scottish bar or something like that, down the beach or what. You, well, I mean, you, you want to go to Spain and hang about with Maria, man, and fucking <laughs> baby all night, man. <laughs> well, mate, I've, 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 I've spoken to her once already this week. We're going to speak to her later on in the show, aren't we? Possibly. If she's I'm not even going to. I see when she comes on. I'm, I'm not even going to ask her if she remembers me, because she'll never remember me. Go on and start swinging your, ch- your chair, mate. It's kind of game in the book, a wee bit. Aye. Uh, well, how was your, how's your sickness? Is that me? What? What are you talking how about? How was your sickness? You were I'm sick fine last week? I'm fine now. I'm fine. I don't know. Don't you bring it up. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, All right, not... right. This weekend, right, troops. Do you know something? Right. It's been a, again, we're going to fucking lock down on Friday. It's no nice, right? Well, you saw North Wales, isn't it? Oh, aye, aye. That's weird, that man, because you're Bra- well... Brag about it, mate. Me, brag mm-hmm. about it. Like... Ar- Irvin Mall is going to be the only shopping centre opened in the west of Scotland. Aye? So, aye. I mean, it's for pound shops and all that, but I mean, aye, it's quite aye. it's quite interesting. Anyway, when you were go- when you go, Sorry, I keep cutting you off, mate. Right. <coughs> sorry, mate. Right, breaking news, troops, while we were just loading up the old Zoom chat, it has been announced that Rangers players Jordan Jones and George Edmondson have been given a seven-game ban for breaking coronavirus protocols. They deserve it when it comes away, didn't they? I absolutely agree, mate. And I don't... I see I've, there's a couple of troops in the group chat that are, got, that are giving it. Oh, how come they got this and other players got that? But uh, there's no defending it at the end of the day. Uh, there's no there, defending it. But why did Aberdeen players only get a three-game ban? Do you know what? I, right. I know you're saying that, Bob, right? But... I think at that time there was a sort of... There, there is a constant confusion with it all, right? There is. But I think at that time, was it no? Just when the boozers had started opening up and whatever. Maybe. I, 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 I personally think with, with Jones and Emerson doing that so far into this when they've seen everybody else get their, their wrist fucking Aye. tanned for it. No tanned, would you call it? Scalped, wrist mm-hmm. slapped, wrist slapped and all that. Right? Slapped. What the fuck? Come on. 
They're, uh, they've, I was, I they've kissed. They, bye they, bye they deserve everything, man. And I think, like we've said, we spoke about it before. I think Jones has finished. Edmondson, Katic comes back for injury. You've got Barrig in there. You've got Goldson. You've got Haranda. Edmondson should be fucking doing everything they can to stay in Gerald's good boots because that's a that's a department where we're overran by quality, to be fair. So he's lucky if he's got to get in the squad again, you know what I mean? Aye, I mean, as I say, I have no nae, nae sympathy towards him, but I mean, that, no. I, 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 I do feel, I feel it more with Edmondson just because we know we've had a kind of, a, a taste of Jones's character and that, you know, I, I feel bad. Aye. No, you're right, I know what you're saying, mate. You know what I mean? Aye, I totally see what you're saying, You know, I mean, as I said, Gerard can't be asked with all that. He doesn't like that. It's heard, heard yeah. him say before, you've got 10 years playing as a football player. Keep the heat for the 10 years. Don't date anything stupid. Aye, and what aye. they done that night, man, you know, because they'll never play for a bigger team than Rangers after this. I don't see no. nobody do that. So it's a daft, daft mistake. We'll get seven-game punishment. Move on for it, whatever. Um, I'm sure... It's, I don't think it would have affected your next seven games anyway. I don't think. I mean, Jones would be good to have there. We've got, but we've got, we're solid at the back of the now anyway. So, but aye, it's just. Aye, a, aye we're fine. I mean, it's not as if fucking Jones has hardly played any part in any fucking no. Gerard era. So to be fair, he's fucked it for himself. And Edmondson, like I say, he's came through fucking oldham young boy. He's been fucking stupid. No, no, that young. He's old enough to know what he's done. He's fucking stupid, but. Again, like you said, mate, you're bang on. They'll not play for bigger clubs than Rangers, so... And Fuck them! They're going to have to live with that, man. It's, yeah. It must be a horrible, horrible feeling, because we've all done, we've all made mistakes, but there you have it. Real football is back this weekend. I'm buzzing. Celtic away to Hibs. Rangers at home to Aberdeen. That is a fucking big weekend, isn't it? That, that is, is a big mate. weekend. It's going to what be hard. What do you think, Ryan? You confident? Uh, ask me five minutes into the game. <laughs> Saturday, I'll let you know. <laughs> What's happening with Christopher Ayer, Christopher Ayer and El Yanusi? What's happening there? Because there was a bit of, I don't know, in Norway, wasn't there? There was a bit of the old COVID kicking around. Uh, they're all right, was, they're available. They're available. They, they had to get checked by the, the government because they were coming back early, but they've uh, allowed them to play the game. So that was a, a massive bonus for us because I could do the goal machine Duffy again. Just kind of do it. Well, so, is that, is, that, you, is that 100% they can play? Yep, confirmed. I'm fucking gutted about that. I'm gutted about that. No, I'll tell you what, Bob. This is gonna. This is. There's just something about this season that obviously I'm enjoying because we're top of the league. But I, I'm fevered again for Sunday, man. Roll on the foot. So man. So I just man, can't so wait man. for it. And I think it's going to be tasty, man. And I think I think Celtic, Celtic will get three points and Rangers will get three points. It'll be tough games for the two of them. But I think this is. I, I think it will be hard, but it will be hard. It will be. I think Aberdeen game's going to be hard. Going to be a tough one. So it is. Um, but bring it on I'm, I'm mega looking forward to it I think it's just one of the ones it's like I don't know me and my mates were saying that like there's no obviously we haven't going on there's no much to look forward to the football man plus like you say grade over tap it's like the old it's like the old days it's like you're going like Celica the Saturday they're going to beat Habs I think and then it's on to us it's that kind of remember the old days with like O'Neill and McLeish and all that mm. it's getting back to that a wee bit but because it's like, do you know, even just looking back at last year, you were bamming up about the Hearts documentary, but mm -hmm. she need two episodes. I've not watched it, I mean, yeah, mate. I need to get around and watch it, man. I need to. I need that's, to. That's such a big difference for Rangers, even for last year, man, because they could, the games that they showed, was, I think, how many times did Rangers drop points to Hearts last season? I'm sure. Mate, Heart, we, Hearts totally did the older season. Fuck, I'm telling mm -hmm. you. I, I can actually remember. That was the kind of moment. Did, was there no, did we not play Hearts in, in January? And I think... They equalised in the second half and then did they not go to, to, to win the game 2-1? I, I think that did happen, didn't it? Was it 2-1? Was, was, was that the Scottish Cup replay at Tynecastle? Oh, I'm Scottish sure Cup I remember I was dropping, dropping, dropping points. I, think. I Aye, could be wrong. But I just, no, remember, I, I just had that feeling that I had the season before at, at Rugby Park. Mm -hmm. And it's just, it's, it gives me the fear of watching the, the games back. But I just, oh, I don't think we've got that. I think we've Mate, we're a different man. animal this season, we are. Animal. I hope so. I mean, this is like, I don't know, man. I'm just a wee bit apprehensive. I don't I don't like, well, no, I know that I don't like. It's, we need to win these kind of games, but it's like a wee mini break for us. You know what we're like? We come back for breaks. Do you know what I mean? We don't want any fucking, we, we need to keep, the momentum is there, man. Finishing the fucking 8-0 hammering the Hamilton. We need to get back with that intensity on Saturday, because, eh, Sunday, because Celica are going to win on Saturday, I think, man, definitely. Right. 
That's it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm right. fucking nervous, man. I'm yeah, pretty nervous. I'm, I'm saying it. absolutely nothing before this game because I'm still making comments on whether Celtic are going to win or not because it always bites me in the arse. No, I did it, Ryan. What do you think? What do you think? Come on. Boy, boys in the dice, man. It's going, to be a, it's going to be a tough game. It's going to be a really tough game. I, I, I'm kind of the same as you. I think we will win, but I think it's, mm-hmm. not, going to, it's not going to be as comfortable as people think it will be. I think it's going to be a scrappy right. one now. You know, wait on goal. Us battering them for 90 minutes and you know probably getting to like 60th minute struggling to put the ball in the back of the net I think it's going to be one of them there, then mate. fucking Griffiths comes on and scores man mm-hmm. he's won like 2 or 3 man aye, aye probably man but it's, it's the same with Ibrooks and all I can't have seen it being a, uh, a, a, a it'll not be easy for us you know so no actually, Aberdeen are looking well organised man they do look decent and I McCrory can't can play but can he Nah, no, 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 no. so that's decent. I never realised he's actually playing Aberdeen until the day, until I looked at the fixtures. Aye. For some reason, I thought it was like Hamilton for some reason, even though it was just them. But I thought it was like another team. But when I seen it was Aberdeen, I thought, oh, right, that'll be a, a juicy game. Mm-hmm. It will be, it will be. And it's on the telly. It's on the telly, it's on the sky. All yeah. right, right. Yeah. Sunday at 12. Sorry. But the Bet- Betfred Cup draw was made as well. And I think that's how producer John, we've not seen him since this draw has been made. And it's the old football daft derby. Rangers are away to Falkirk. Celtic getting the luck of the draw again at home to Ross County. Oh, we need to do. I can, we need to do something with old John, man. Aye. We need to say we, we, old we, John. <laughs> <laughs> old John. <laughs> like he's a fucking uh, Uncle Nobby, man. Pure old John. <laughs> uh, we need to do something with old John. <laughs> yeah, I'm a man, old John. Get him on his fucking webcam, man. Bam him up, man. He's <laughs> Fucking rocking and rolling that night with the beers and all that. Nah, fucking no, old John. He's been loving it, hasn't he, man? He's, he's you know, got aye, like a wee aye. beer hanging on that, man. He's, I bet he's been loving life aye. the last week, man. Pure playing that yes or I can bring man. Just constantly his motor and not getting his wings to sing it and all that. <laughs> <laughs> One more time. Come on. Yes, sir. <laughs> but I wait to fall cut, but it's another dodgy pitch, but they've got an artificial pitch, haven't they? Right, right. Aye, that's a pain in the ass. Sure Home in Ross County, Rainer. That it is. Should be, should be easy enough, shouldn't it? Defending another trophy again. You know what I mean, the defence of another trophy. Aye, I've seen they've set the date as well for the the Scottish Cup final. What is it? The 20th of December. Aye, something like that. 20th of December. That'll be a either a really good Christmas or a really pish Christmas. He's going to beat Hearts. He's going to beat Hearts, man. Mate, I don't. I like I said to you earlier on. I don't take anything for granted this season. Any results, I'll take everything that I can get. So, on the show today, we are joined by former Rangers, Wolves and Aberdeen player who is now reserve manager at Motherwell. It is Morris Ross. And the Football Daft open line is back. And once again, we are looking for your questions for our top team. That's me and Grado, by the way. And Alex from Trademate Sports gives us his latest tips for a bit of bookie bashing. And in this week's big question, we are asking for your craziest celebration stories. After seeing a guy on Twitter celebrate Scotland making the Euros by getting the scoreline tattooed on him, and we might even get him on for a chat as well. Are you there? Right, football daft fans, we need to remind you each and every week about G4 claims because if you've been in a road traffic accident and it's not your fault, don't be going to your insurance company, don't be getting your premium sky high. Why not use G4 claims? Because they're going to make it a hell of a lot easier for you. They provide you with complete accident management support that you need. They're going to recover the cost for the at-fault party. And while they're dealing with your motor, they're going to send you a vehicle that's very much like your own. So it's a vehicle replacement, a like-for-like vehicle replacement. They're going to organise your vehicle to be repaired at one of their approved body shops. And should your vehicle be in the right half, then they're going to recover the pre-accident value for your car. Then they'll write you a big fat check and best of it, it doesn't cost you a penny basically, they charge the insurance directly. They don't cold call you, they're not going to buy your data and once they've processed your claim, your insurance, that's not going to be touched. And the best thing is, Nicole and the team out there, they're not going to take your case off, they're not going to be taking your case on if they don't think that they can help. So if you've been in a road traffic accident or you know somebody that has, get on to G4 Claims on 01698. 767172. That's 01698 767172. Their website's not at faultclaim.com or you can find them on social media at G4 Claims Limited because G4 Claims, not at fault claims. Made easy. Right, welcome 
welcome to the Football Daft Open Line, where anything goes. This is the part of the show where we give you the chance to ask our panel absolutely anything. You, know, you can talk football if you wish, but we won't accept it. Throw it is. You know, River City, Scott Squad, wrestling, food, flying, if you want. Um, let's meet the superstar panel. First up, Stephen Keevens. Mm-hmm. Nice to see and, you, all. Nice to see you, all. And Graham Sutton. How you doing? Oh, terrible part, but how you doing? <laughs> You loved you loved it last week. Shit. Nah, I did like it last week, mate. I've, I, I, I've, yeah, uh, Graham, 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 don't be offending anybody this week, mate. Don't what's that? Anybody. Don't be offending anybody. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. What's your league, man? Fuck's sake. Don't. Right, on you go. Right, we'll get to our, our first caller then. So first up, we've got Kevin Devine, who's got a question for Grado. It's the chef. How are you doing? It's the chef. How are you doing, mate? You all right? Like yourself? I'm good, mate. I, I, I daily, I daily like your sick name. That's that's an idea I always had. If I was going to change my wrestling name up, I would change it, change it to Champus Divine. <laughs> Champus Divine. I've always had that in the back. Aye, because yeah. sometimes you need. Uh, anyway, there we go. Ask me, James. <laughs> <laughs> What's that? Ask me, James. Ask me, changing my name now, James. <laughs> <laughs> Kevin, what's your question? Right. Obviously, you're a new captain. Mm-hmm. So. If you had a private jet, my man, what would your destination be? And what five people would you take with you? And why? Oh, that's a good question. Oh, right. Can not be any of the boys for the football daft? So. Right, okay. So I uh, take it as it, like, celebrities and you're like, you're deed folk, not that, aye? Be yeah, well, who you want to be, mate. Right. I would go to... I'd fly to... I'd fly to Vegas. But I don't know if you could get to Vegas in a private jet. I probably need to stop off somewhere, probably some day, somewhere uh, just before you hit America. Uh, what do you call that area? That kind of airspace you need to hit there because you need to refuel. So I'd fly to Vegas, and the five folk that I'd bring with me. Um, oh fucking these questions! Damn, I've had enough of this before. Who would you want coming and coming down with me and all this, Kiro? Nana, who would I want? Dinner party, you know that. Right, okay. First one, without a doubt, I'd want to show off my flying skills to Alan McCoyst. He would need to be there, man. Uh, he could be my first me, officer. I- that's what I was going. I was going with my first person, McCoyst. That was first officer, man. Alan McCoyst is definitely there. I've got to say, who else? Um, I'd need to take a wrestler with me, without a doubt. What wrestler would I take with me? Um, I mean, my favourite wrestler of all time is The Rock, but he's been a wee bit a pain in the arsenal on Instagram and all that. He's took and a hi, welcome to the channel. You know that kind of way. I don't know. There's, I don't think The Rock is as cool as he was as what he was twenty years ago. Same with Undertaker as well. I would. I would I maybe like to. Gonna chow his his ear on a long haul flight, but he's sitting on TikTok now and on Instagram, so kind of I went after him a wee bit. Jumping about with fucking Yeezys on. Yeezys and all that, working out with his bird on Instagram when he should be sitting in there with some kind of seller with his like bandana on and he's kind of you know what I mean. He should be Undertaker anyway. Uh, so uh, what? All right, I'll bring in. All right, you want me to take Taker's bird with me? Take his bird. Right, you super alley Taker's bird. Um. Larry David, go ahead, go, I, I'd love. But although with Larry David, Larry David is my hero, but I, I reckon he would he would think I was a pain in the ass. I don't think he'd like. I don't think he time for me. But I would, Mate, I, it I, would I, be I, like I, the episode where Ricky Gervais meets him. Aye, he'd think you look Ricky Gervais, man. He'd fucking try. And, he, I don't think he'd like you. No, nah, I think he'd like me either. But I would, I'd take him. So, I'd, so what we go? How many? It was at five folks. So we've got They've Super Ali, Takers Bird, Larry David. I would take Jerry Pelini with me. <laughs> I need a, I need a good hour. I need a good hour to no. no, Kevin said you're not allowed to take any football daft boys. Pliny's part of the football he daft family. He does. Is he count as football daft? No, I'm kidding on. You can take <laughs> Jerry Pellini. So how many have I got now? I've got one it's left. Enough. One left. Two. What kind of things you need, man? For a long flight and a smash after a bit. Well, I can't drink because I'm flying. Even oh. though the autopilot's fucking easy. I'm uh, not asking to ask the questions, but it's something to be fair. So. Say that again. Is the current that asked the questions pretty decent? You want to come to me? <laughs> I mean, I've not been to Vegas, so... I, I would break... Right, okay, I'd... I don't know if I'd... No. I mean, I see, I see you every week on this fucking podcast, mate. <laughs> 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 right, uh, no, do you know what? Do you know what? Listen to us, right? I think this is nice. Do you know who I would take? It's my fifth, right? Listen to us. I'd take old John. John the producer. Oh, John, that's his uh, new name? <laughs> old John? I would take John, man, to just because he would love. He would love. You're not allowed to take care of football, daft boys, Kevin. Oh, what the f- man! John's never fucking here now, anyway. So I am. I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm offended, mate. I am. Uh, offended. I, no, no. no I, 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 Ryan's going to storm off. 
Crazy. I could just see John getting a <laughs> getting a couple of get a couple of hoffs in him and like talking to the Undertaker on that and trying Larry, to remember <laughs> that episode, Larry. <laughs> Larry. Aye, aye. You ever think about taking Curb to Glasgow? <laughs> aye. Taker, tell me about this match with, with Kane. How was that for you? You know what I mean? <laughs> so there's my five. Producer John, Jerry Polini, Larry David, Super Alley, and Taker's Bird. We're at day. <laughs> We're going to Vegas. <laughs> Sure right, I, 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 by the way, I will be back on Twitch soon. I had a, I had some issues with my broadband this week, so I've, uh, I've, as I say, I've, and I've taken my green screen down and all that. So uh, I'll be back on Twitch sometime soon. I can I freaking I've not been on it for two weeks. I knew this would happen. I knew this would happen, man. I knew it. I knew I shouldn't have changed my Instagram logo. I knew I'd date for about three times, then I get pissed off with it and no date anymore. But I'll get back in the seat soon. Cool story, man. <laughs> just, just right, brilliant, Kevin. Up, Cheers, Cheers Kevin, Kevin mate. mate. Thanks a lot, bud. See you, see you next week. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Cheers. Yeah. Caller number two then, Stephen McKay, he's got a question about Scotland and something else. Hey, that Stephen. is some cool, that is cool facial hair, man. That is cool. Yeah. All right. He's, he's a bit better. I like that. Never mind the facial hair. Is that a retro 90s or 80s nah. referee tap? No, it's a Scotland 1990 <laughs> training tap. I said Scotland training tap, you're fucking mad. A referee tap? referee tap. What's the referee tap? What's yeah. happening, my man? Ah, well, it's getting to work, and that's about it. Probably I think you can only say what you do, no? Yeah, probably best I don't. Nah, I wouldn't have. Because he's bevying. Oh. Steve, what's your, what's your question for the guys, mate? Right. I've got 25 questions, so I'll first run pretty quick. All right. Uh, Stephen. You need yes. to give up one, Riverside or Rangers. <clears throat> what did you give up? Oh, that's hard, mate. In fact, sorry. You need to give up Acton or Rangers, no just River City. So that makes it easier, I think. Because oh, <laughs> I know what he's going to say. Yeah. If he says Acton, he says he would give up Acton, but he said he will not give up River City, but because he'll be fighting in case the directors are watching and all that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God, man. You can still can watch I, your games on I, TV, I, but you can't go to the games. <clears throat> Oh man, right. I would need to. I need to stick with acting. It's my job. It's my. It's my. It's my bread and butter. It's. It's my Wayne's livelihood. It's my Wayne's. Ah, oh, I don't know, but. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! Right, aye. Because I'll. St- I, do you know what? I'm with the whole lockdown carry on. I'm getting used to no got the games. I bought a big projector and all that. I watch the games in the house. I don't work weekends. So right there we go. There we go. I think you've just sacked the Rangers daft then, haven't you? <laughs> <Ping that. laughs> Fuck, mate, if I'm sacked, there's no Rangers daft then if it's left to fucking grey, though. <laughs> <laughs> That's fair enough. <laughs> uh, what else to go? Aye, grey, though. What's your favourite Shania Twain song? My favourite, well, my favourite Shania Twain song. Aye. Well, to be honest with you, I watched Shania Twain live in Las Vegas on Sky Arts. You can download that. And I wasted but I'd say the best one, because I think I fast forward, forwarded it to it, is fucking, man, I feel like a woman. That's a fucking screamer. <laughs> man, I feel, I feel kind of shy. I know I'm gonna scream and shout. She's right. feeling kind of shy. <laughs> Fredo, you just know, man, if your boss at the pavilion's hearing this, you're singing that in panto next year. I'm feeling kind of shy. Is there somebody on and all that? <laughs> <laughs> Aye, so that's my favourite Shania song. Oh, what about that don't impress me much? Nah, no, nah, no. Nah. No, they, man, I feel like a woman, that's sticking out. That's the main event. That's the top dog. That's, the that's an anthem. That's where they're that's buying the tickets from. Because she had the big long intro taking her. Okay, I, mean, oh, me, man. I was actually laughing when Stephen asked this question, but you're getting right into it now, mate. <laughs> <laughs> That's oh, a good question. See, see if you're sitting with a, with a couple of horse with your missus and that stick it on, she'll love it. We went to see her oh, in yeah. Glasgow and we ended up on the, the kiss cam on the screen and then my missus sat down and left me snoring. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant, man. Yeah, man. Any other questions, Stephen? Is that right? Um, not good questions, but I want to poise up into right. something. Go for it, go for it. The, was it the show last week before the Scotland game? These are all it off. We're jumping the bandwagon. We're going. <laughs> I know it's coming. I'm, I'm pissed off. I'm really pissed off. Guys. Right, I'm going to hold my horns up, Stephen. Right, see if I could go back in time. 
and do that show again, I would still <laughs> say the same thing. Because I, I can't, I can't, I'm not going to sit here and lie. I am a glory hunter. And I say that earlier on to the boys, I'm fucking finished with Scotland now until the summer. <laughs> <laughs> the last two games, mate, it's like, they had me up there. And then the two games, I'm like, what's the point? Aye. Do you know what I mean? Aye, nah, I would mate, I'm, I, I jumped in the bandwagon, I did. Aye. I'm a big piece of shit as well. It's the same with likes of the Buffs. I've not been at the Buffs in a good couple of years, right? And I know if they start winning games and, and they get to the, the Scottish Cup final and stuff like that, I'll be there. You know what I mean? I, I, I just I just get caught in, in amongst it last week. So, but I mean, I, I did look out. I mean, it was a boring game on Sunday. I caught the last ten minutes of the game last night because I was doing wrestling daft. But I well, it was a good experience last week. Well, obviously, we support Scotland. It's just I can understand why folk will hate us for this. Are they? Aye, aye. Take, plus, take it to move on. Plus, we're Rangers fans. You know what I mean? The Scotland fans are never going to love us. Are they? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> But I can see Grado down in London next year, man, with a fucking kilt on and the tart, the fucking hey you Jimmy hat and Aye. bagpipes. Then I should have a twin song and the bagpipes, Laura. So Stephen, I take it you well before all we saw this happen, lockdown. Like, you go to all the Scotland games, Laura? No, I just bought three strips after the qualified. <laughs> 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 Fair enough, mate. Fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> hey, bro, cheers, Stephen. <laughs> That's not a problem. Cheers, guys. Cheers, Stephen. Mate, thanks. That was brilliant, yeah. mate. Cheers, cheers mate. Pal, See you later, And last up then, boys, we've got Callum. He's a Celtic fan, but this question is about food. So you did it, Demi. Food. Right up Graham Street. Absolutely. There we go. There you go. Aye, Aye, good, mate. Good. All good. I was, sure that, I, I was waiting a while there, and I was like, did I hang up and phone back, or just wait? <laughs> mate, <laughs> the guy we had on before, you had about 80 questions, man. No. You're sitting there getting packed up. Right, on <laughs> 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 right, you go, mate. What's your question, then? Uh, right, my question. You've got one day left in this lovely planet, but you've got to have one set of meals left. Mm-hmm. Grado especially, you like your food. You've got your breakfast, your lunch, your dinner. I'll even chuck in a wee pudding, right, just to be nice. What's your final meals? Right, okay, that's a good one, right. So, I've got to be honest with you. You see the now, my breakfast, what I'm going for, without a doubt, a double sausage and egg McMuffin with a hash brown. In fact, two hash browns, since it's my last one. Tomato sauce uh, and a latte and a drink of juice. Then I go to the candy bar for a yum-yum. So, that's my breakfast at the road, right? Am I getting my lunch? <laughs> oh, you're getting your lunch, mate. You're getting, getting your lunch, lunch. Right? No, for my lunch, I want to keep myself right for my dinner. Do you know what I mean? I don't want to spoil it. I want to be starving by the time my dinner comes at night so I can enjoy it. Well, because that's what I've noticed recently, right? Like, I need to learn to stop eating, kind of, right? Because it's such a good feeling, like, being hungry for something. Do you get what I mean by that? Like, see if you eat all day and you, you, you get a, you get a just eat, it's fucking, what's the point? You want to be fucking mega starving for it. But there is, uh, just to go off on a wee tangent about here, there is a trick to it. What you should do is, if you've got an empty belly, right, before your main course, see half an hour before you have your big dinner, eat a wee bit of bread or a wee bit of, a wee bit of cold meat, something to open up your belly. Because see if you've no wet all day, your belly fucking, what's the opposite for swelling? Uh, shrinks. Shrinks. Your belly shrinks, right? So, anyway. <laughs> for my lunch... <laughs> For my lunch, I'm going to ask for, and I'm only saying this now because I've got a wee notion for one now. That's probably... A wee a, No, no, no. I'm probably, and this will surprise you, right? I would say for my lunch, I'd go for a big tatty. Right. For a big tatty. Because I'm not, I'm not going to fucking... Um, who the fuck's that from me? I'm not going to... Um, I, I want to keep myself right, so I'd have a big tatty. I don't know if it would be with cheese or coleslaw. Probably tuna mayonnaise because I've had cheese at my breakfast. And I'm going to be having cheese definitely for my main course, my last main course. And for my main course, I reckon I'm going to have, uh, and I take it, have I, can I, am I looking to go to more than one takeaway or what's I'm trying to think? This is your final meal, Craig. Come on. Final meal, right. Whatever okay. you want, mate. Right. I would need to have a big plate, right? A big, massive plate. And I'd have a medium rare fillet steak there. I'd have a portion of chips, cheese, and donut meat with garlic sauce. I'd have a side order of four cheese macaroni with parmesan on the top, probably chorizo for it. I need to get chorizo one more time. And a fish supper, right? No, 
a fish supper and a half pizza supper and a fritter roll with a tub of curry <laughs> sauce and five pickles and a bottle of red cola. And then for my dessert, I would have... Um, a fucking heart attack. <laughs> <laughs> I would say for my last one, I've got to have... I've got to have sticky toffee pudding with ice cream, a bit of tablet on the side, and I'd need to have a freezing cold gar- galaxy caramel there for me, I know. You're having all this in the one day. You're already doing something one day. I'm dying tonight. That's what I'm missing you, innit? Fucking hell, man. <laughs> I can't afford that, mate. Nothing to wash it down. Aye, red cola. He's going to red cola. Red cola, but I do like my cans of Diet Coke. I'd probably... I probably have a, I probably create a diet coke and all because I fucking nail through. He's just watching the calories. Mm-hmm. Aye. Well, I don't Fuck like the taste. I, I don't. I, I don't like the. I would need actually diet coke to wash down my, my red cola because red cola makes me dry. See normal fatty juice. I can't. I can't clench my first with it. So I would need the diet coke there as well. That's the kind of tactic there. So there you have it, Megan. What do you think? Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> you you were loving that there. You were right. Like you were looking <laughs> down as if I. In the zone. <laughs> Stephen, what are you having? Bowl of porridge? Oh my God, man. Right. <laughs> right. Breakfast. Two poached eggs and toast. Right. Definitely. Lunch. Like Grado was saying, I like to be hungry at my dinner. Lunchtime. I might just have like a fucking tub of super noodles or something. Like chicken or curry flavour. Super noodles. But we can of orange San Pellegrino. Grado knows I love that. Oh, fuck. Have that, right. Then when it comes to dinner time, that's when I'm going to go to town. I'm going to get a mix satty. With curry sauce, no prawns, just chicken and beef. Curry sauce, post of salt and chili chicken, chips, and a bottle of Moretti. I I want I, I want hang with an actually. I want a bottle of Blue Moon, and I also want um, what do you call it? I want uh, spare ribs as well. <laughs> oh, spare ribs! Barbe- barbecue spare ribs. Uh, you know what? Can, you know what, mate? I'll get the, I'll get the spare ribs, mate. You can have one of mine, mate. Right, you can do that all day. Right, we'll share that. Shearsies, shearsies. Aye. I'll have a bit of your fish supper, I know. <laughs> I don't know about that. Hey, cool. Mate, <laughs> 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 hey, right. the question. Aye, that was good, mate. That's the way different, though. Aye, mate, I'm exactly, fed up mate. talking about fucking and Budge and all that. So cheers, mate. Thanks very much. <laughs> no worries. <laughs> cheers, mate. All the best, mate. Yes. Thanks a lot, bud. Yeah, cheers. Cheers, mate. Yeah, yeah, mate. Hey, Right, there you go, boys. That's another football daft open line. It's good to get some variety this week, wasn't it? Mm-hmm. Aye. Man, it's nice. Aye, I enjoyed that. I enjoyed that. It was a wee bit of, I mean, it's not every day you have a phone in where you talk about tattoo. No, what was it? Shania Twain, mm-hmm. fish suppers, satties, fucking To be fair, Rangers it is and... on this show, isn't it? Aye. Power a podcast, power a football daft. Thanks again, everybody. And if you get your questions, fire them into old John or Ryan at the team. Oh, John! Football Daft, we want to help you out with this brand new way to beat the bookies. TradeMateSports.com It's a new tool for sports traders that calculates the true odds of a sports event and signals when the bookies make mistakes so you can exploit them using value betting. In betting markets, there are a few market leaders that the rest of the market follows, and TradeMate Sports have worked to identify these market leaders, which has enabled them to calculate the true odds in different sports markets. The true odds being the odds that most accurately reflects the actual probability of an outcome. Now, because bookmakers offer different odds on the same games, insufficiencies occur in sports betting markets. Their algorithm compares the true odds to the odds of more than 100 bookmakers to look for deviations, then signals these deviations in real time, enabling you to exploit them, which with its orbit. And here is Alex for TradeMate Sports to give you his tip for the weekend. You know, football daft listeners, thank bloody God the international break is over and we're back into some Premier League and Scottish Premier League, all these things are back. Uh, got some tips for you this week. We've got Newcastle versus Chelsea. In this one, we're going for over 2.75 goals at odds of 1.95 or better. That would be good. And then we've got Tottenham versus Man City. Big game in the EPL. Under three goals at 1.98. Try find prices of those or better. And that'll help you out with your long-term punting. And if you're looking to find lots of value bets... Hundreds every weekend, 
make sure to head over to the Trade Mate Sports website and start a free week trial. See you guys next week. So get involved with TradeMateSports.com right now and support Football Daft by checking out the link in the episode bio or heading to our social media Football Daft Pod on Twitter or just playing old Football Daft on Facebook. Let's get bookie bashing troops. Football Daft's big question. This week's big question comes from something we've seen on Twitter after Scotland qualified for the Euros. A lad called Joe Ross got the Scotland score tattooed on his thigh. The goal scorers, penalties, there are a lot. You can check it out on our Football Daft Twitter. And Joe actually joins us now. There he is. There he is. How are you doing, Joe? Fair technical difficulties, yeah. There's some builders in. That's all right, that's all right. What's yes, happening? How's your tattoo, mate? All right? How's your tattoo? Ah, good, good, it's all right. Still, 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 watch still. yourself. That's the <laughs> boys. Watch it, easy. My computer was not living, so I've had to get it off my phone, mate. Pure scatter brain today. <laughs> yeah, let's we'll see how this deal with it with a tattoo. So did you get it? Is it your pal that did it? I don't know the full story. I've just seen pictures of it, man. It's brilliant. But what did you do? Did you just did you just book it in like that night? Or what, what, what was the deal? Oh, no, no. I mean, I don't know on the day. No, so the back story is, is where the, the 20, 2017 game the, at Hamden, uh, uh, England, England, Scotland. Mm-hmm. Uh, we were all going to that. And I had swallows. And my, me and my mate said to each other, right, we'll, we'll get a tattoo of Scotland one. Just get, we'll just get something to Scotland win. And then we went, so we went 2 1 up against some Griffiths, the second free kick, and we hand and went fucking nuts, man. Going crazy. And uh, we're like, right, we're, go- we're going to get a tattoo. And then fucking Harry Kane, Mick Slabbery mouse scored. Uh, <laughs> you fucking up the part, fuck you shot. I know, it's the last minute, typical, typical is, but in it, last minute, pure fucked it. Um, but, so that game, it was, there was no talk yet after that, but we always said, man, we'll get, we'll get a tattoo or something. And we went to Belgium, we fall, I had to fall apart in the army, kind of fly everywhere I can. And we went to Belgium and that, and we were talking about different tattoo ideas and that, just daft shit, and I'm mad at <laughs> And then comes to obviously last Thursday, no, even if I had a thought of it in my head, like maybe if we win, we'll get a tattoo. But I didn't know what a jink is last time I said I was going to get a tattoo, a jink stick, man. Aye. 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 Like, I mean, no, no jinks and no nothing like that on um, Thursday there. It was just pure wrap myself in cotton wool, don't talk to anybody about the game, just pure. Try to keep it quiet. So, game is done, man. We've we've won. All going nuts. And my pal's like, well, may as well get a tattoo then. But right soon, may as well. I but I was plastered, mate. I was up. I was in my bed for twelve o'clock. Whitey everywhere. Uh, I took <laughs> some too far on Thursday. <laughs> took took three took Friday morning off work. Woke up, man. Banging so heat in the morning. Now I I was like. Fuck it, I'm getting a tattoo, man. So I started, I started scribbling down ideas, and that sent it into my pals. I was like, "Yeah, boys, I'm gonna go a tattoo." And like, "No, you only fuck sake. Get a grip of yourself. You're just hungover. I still try to bam it up. Phoned a couple of tattoo shops. Like, I, I, I I'm looking to get a tattoo. Scotland won last night. Now we don't do football tattoos. Well, you hear that everywhere, didn't you? Uh, really? I, I, I've, 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 see, when I get my tattoos, those guys always moaning, I don't do football. I don't do football. Oh, right, okay. I, but I'm in there and they're just because they put time cans a monster and listen to Slipknot and that. You're laughed at my phone now. <laughs> that is true, but makes the tattoo artists are like that, isn't it? That's funny. Oh, hey, your sound's yeah. off, your sound's off. Sound, sound. Hey, the boy, the boy that done it to me was, uh, I was shouting, some boy, some boy. Aye. <laughs> <laughs> some boy. <laughs> so what did you do? Did you just, did you just get, take a picture of it and then, then fire up on internet, Twitter? What was the deal? No, I will. So I, I, I'm on the Tartan Army page on, the, on Facebook. And I, I just put it in, a picture of it. I put up my story in that and, and Snapchat and that and everybody was saying you're a fan you're a fan in that. Nothing I've not heard before, obviously. Mm-hmm. And, uh, <laughs> so I put it in and then I was I phoned up Super Scoreboard the night before and uh and I was taught I was the last caller on before they kicked off. But I thought I was, but I've heard the other things but and I was 
and I was like, ah, f- I, went up, I went up the float the next day and all, but I bought, went up and bought myself clothes and that after it, and just, and I, I was like, I'll phone up for scoreboard and see I've got a tattoo and that and see what they say. Yeah. And then I got, and then I phoned up and the guy was like, oh, and I was like, Joe Philip Royce, and I think he was the boy was like, oh, Christ, it's, this, it's him again. <laughs> but, uh, as I said, he sent us a photo yet, so I sent it to Clyde SSB. And the right. boy phoned us right back and went, listen, mate, we've got this for you. Gonna, you're going on the radio next. So I'm, okay. I'm actually walking around with bags of shopping, trying to talk to Hugh Keevans. So is there need that it said, oh, man, get in there, well done? Because I, I think that I stuff's thought, quality. I most, most of it, I mean, you, if you just seen all the slag inside. Well, uh, <laughs> Usually, when somebody puts some something like that up, folk will go or oh, daft, you know yeah. that. I mean, I go, I got, right, so it, obviously, it says Euro 2021, right? Mm-hmm. And that's the way main one I got, and everybody it was all slain. But most people have been quite sound with it. But the fact is, that, oh, well, it is Euro 2020, technically. For a aye, year, so it's going to be in 2021, really, mate. 2020, so aye, aye, aye. But I'm not going to get 2020 tattooed on me when it's been a year, but. Well, that's true. Go, you can't go to the pub and have a pint of power and you can't even go up and sniff your granny, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean? What's the point in getting yeah, that tattooed, my life? Listen, but see how even we anomalies or whatever you call it, right? I, I was in Magaluf last year and I got my favourite Chinese and the free tunes tattooed on my back, May's Kitchen, and the phone number underneath it. <laughs> and uh, it got in the paper, right? We were sitting in Magaluf, right? Fucking forgot just think nothing out of it well because we all had like, daft tattoos little and just pure stupid shit and the next minute my, my mate across the table went that's on the fucking sun website they're getting abuse because the fucking the comma was in the wrong place or the apostrophe whatever oh. it is because it's, it's, oh, it's m-e-i-s and I, I don't know they just said gradle's tattoo gaff i'm like what the fuck <laughs> is that oh no <laughs> I spelt, I spelt the chinese's number around you know what i mean there's nothing going to be devastated about that don't give a fuck <laughs> i want an advert mate <laughs> <laughs> the the boy for sun phone does and all the sun picked up in it, eh? And I, I got a phone and I thought right enough for sun phone so it's like it's going it's going by shambles. This man it's, it's going to get slotted. But the guy that actually done is I felt an all right article. I, I read I it. Was, was we was we calling about you calling Lamont? Is it calling Lamont? Might have been, might have been, right. mate, might have been right. something like that. But boy, so to, 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 to what if you beat England? Are you going to go after not getting our man if you beat England? Mate, fuck it for the boys, eh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the thing is, right, yeah, listen, I can be I can be the most sensible person on the planet. See as soon as I get a dunk in me, mate, it's f- it's fucking fair game. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, I can't it's it's no cunt safe. Hey, uh, I mean, once, once lockdown's over, mate, I'm coming to get a baby with you if I'm Rob Royce and I'm just gonna step Baby, uh, yeah. Stevie, I've seen you. I've seen you walking. Have you you know what? You want your dog or something? I have clocked you. Oh, that's Stevie Burton. <laughs> <laughs> you got a dog, Chelsea, Bob? Oh, it'll, be, it'll, be, it'll be the chow, mate. It'll be Nicholas Myers. I probably I take it out if I walk quite a lot. Do you want your Bob's Myers dog? <laughs> Aye, mate. Big Teddy, man. You're fucking welcome. Ah, no, that's no fair, mate. I just yeah, mate. See if you laugh anymore. I'll put Teddy in the motor and drive out and get your wee pussy done in, man. Tell me. Yeah, that's my fucking security guard there, man. <laughs> Cheers for coming on, mate. I appreciate it, man. No, no, but he's like, the best. Right, take care, my man. That was cool. Cheers, Cheers, Cheers. Take care, Joe. See you later, mate. And before we get on to the listener stories, we actually have another special guest today. You've seen the hilarity over the week with players and fans singing along to Bakras. Yes, sir, I can boogie. We are joined by Maria herself from Bakara. Hello. Maria. There we go. Okay. Hello. What a beautiful house you've got, first of all. But Maria, how are you? What a feeling it must be. What a week. You are the most talked about female in Scotland, Maria. How does it feel? I feel fantastic. <laughs> I feel very good. I was here just uh, more or less sleeping in the home with this coronavirus that you cannot go nowhere. And you are yeah. like dead. You know, like a mummy, and now, well, at once, you you know, it's non-stop. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm, you're in demand. Uh-huh. I'm awake. You know, it's, it's amazing, Maria. But when when did you realize? Was it Thursday night or Friday morning? Did somebody get in contact with you? How did you realize that your song "Yes" after all these years has came yes. back with a vengeance, and it's now Scotland's 
national anthem. And by the way, I heard you talking on the radio the other morning. It was it was interesting to hear you talk about Andy Considine. <laughs> you knew him, yes. didn't you? Yes, I mean, this was uh, the fans and friends, what I had, they were starting to call me to tell, come on, you are. You know, I say, what? Well, on the end, I, I was finding out, going through internet in the computer and looking. And then I was getting in touch with uh, Andy Considine uh, to, to <laughs> tell him thank you. And I was also writing to the Scottish Federation to tell thank you so much because I was nearly dying here. And at once, you was making me the most happy woman in the world. Oh, uh, that's amazing. That's a it, brilliant story. It's a beautiful yeah. story. It's so but what, I'm not I'm not lying, you know, because with this yeah. I don't know how you are in the in the UK, you know here, you know, you are like they tell me, you go out, no, thank you, thank you, no, I stay here, like in a box. You know, you yeah. are uh, yeah. yeah, well we're we are all these calls. And all the people calling me and whoosh, mamma mia. <laughs> <laughs> I, because Maria, I'll tell you what, you're exactly right. With this coronavirus, everybody is, what we say in Scotland, down in the dumps. We're feeling a bit depressed. But I'm telling you, last week with Scotland um, qualifying in your song, it definitely has lifted everybody's spirits, hasn't it, Bob? It, it, it definitely has. It definitely has, because obviously we're we're kind of, we've been put back into lockdown a little bit, so spirits of Right, well, that was Maria. I used to go with BFS after this lady. I don't mind to talked to her twice this week, man. Ah, no, I can't remember. I don't, I don't think she remembered me for the first time. Either. I don't think she did, mate. I felt no. quite bad to you. That's a bit of a redneck, man. Because you were pure lat looking. How are you doing? You were pure lat, Maria. Good to Maria. see you again. <laughs> <laughs> How are you? Oh, mate. Monday. Mate, I love, the, I love the way you were pure lat. I mean, I've got the, 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 the Spanish chicken and I've got the, the, the onion. I've got the chorizo. 
I'm getting the red wine, the full buffer. <laughs> Well, I thought I thought I'd, I'd put a wee fucking exotic twang on it, so she'd maybe understand me. Aye, well, we all thought that, mate. Get the fucking Spanish, and, she, and then she started to go like, she's like Spanish, what? You're like chicken, chicken. <laughs> gobble, gobble. <laughs> <laughs> no, she was a good laugh, but Aye, she was she a good, was good laugh, man. right? She might as well have a margarita pack of tan, man. <laughs> She does a bit. She does. She does. Who we lost that shit? Mate, before. right. S- celebrations, man. Have you done any? You done any mental when Rangers have won her in? You done? You went to the Rangers one night. I ran on the park when we beat Ockham Lake Talbot in the quarterfinals of the OVD Scottish Junior Cup in 1999, and I got on the STV News because it. Um, I ran okay. on the park, pitch invaded me and about three other guys. It's quality. I mean, we <laughs> got helped to get off the park after about two seconds, but it was a buzz. So I mean that's a kind of kind of stupid one for us to win, but I kind of think getting else. Have you have you done anything? Mate, I don't I, no. I was yeah, I was too busy like, acting and doing plays and all that. And I was younger and all that. I mean, so that's I'm what I'm saying. Know. Everybody thinks you're a maddie, but you needed to have your head screwed on. It's child exactly. Star, aye. It, so, it, it, about, it's mad for me. Go I was going to Ibrox when we won the league at like, helicopter Sunday, rugby park, Tannadice, getting to Ibrox with my pals just for a nice man. wee for a nice wee clap of the. All the players going around the pitch and then up the road for a wee, a wee DVD. You're off your head. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> right, let's get to the listeners. Paul Martin sent us a photo of his nephew who got a tattoo on each thigh. One, say, one side says, yes, sir, I can boogie Euro 2020. And the other says, David Marshall shag me. <laughs> there we go. There we go. There's more than one photo. That's, there's plenty of photos that were getting tattoos now then, eh? Aye. Yeah. Okay, well, I got no sales, man. It wasn't just Joe. Have we got Paul Martin on the line? No. Oh, we got Paul? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. No. No, he's not here. No. no. Must be the only person we've not got on this week. <laughs> <laughs> hey. The Pro Set Playoff is back with piesports.com. You know, with Scottish football fans eating over a million pies a year, we'd love to bring some of the, the, the real Scottish taste to your home. Uh, Scotch pies, steak and gravy, macaroni, the lot. Ordering is done on the website via the Pie Stall page, or you can call the SOS hotline, which is Save Our Savories. That's 0141 799 Delivery of the pies is currently free of charge to a bunch of postcodes. You'll find them on the website, piesports.com, and deliveries are made either the Friday or the Saturday of the weekend, so you'll have the pies ready for the game. So today, playing for the pies, it's Stephen Kelly. How are you doing, Stephen? I'm good. Yourself? Not bad, mate, not bad. So who would you have a preference of playing? Eh, uh, Toll. <laughs> so he's not here, mate. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he's an annual leave, mate. He's an annual leave. <laughs> in fact, here, let me get a shake, because I'm here, Stephen, that you've had, you're waiting on a PS5 or you're just getting one delivered. Troops, is this the reason why Toll's got us off? Is he waiting on a PS5? Oh, he ordered this. That's right. Aye. That's right. Hell, man, he's at it. So, big man, have you got yours yet? Is it delivered? I've got two of them delivered. Oh, yeah. wait, what, what's you selling the second one for? <laughs> what you offering? <laughs> Is that what you're doing? No, the other one's for the wee man. Ah. Ah, yeah. No, mate, come on, folk listen to this or what here. What's it like then? Because folk will want to hear that, won't they? If you, if you can't get the batteries in it, what's the deal? I, I've had two delivered. The wee blast experience, the wee blast experience. The good, 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 the they're expensive. <laughs> <laughs> cool, man. Right, so you've no got told to play. How are we going to do this? Are you flipping a coin? I'll flip a coin. So the rules oh, are simple. I will, I'll will read the description of the football art from the 91-92 Pro Set card set that I've got here that John has sent me across very kindly. And all you need to do is buzz in um, with who you think it is. So, Stephen, have you got a buzzer in mind? Have you got something? Uh, I'll go for Jones after his seven-game ban today. <laughs> right. oh. So you'll be up against Stephen or Grado. I'll flip a coin. Hedge it's Stephen, Tails, Grado. Flip the coin. Tails, it's Grado. Uh, Grado. So you're up right. against Grado. Grado, what's your buzzer going to be? Big George. <laughs> <laughs> right, so I'll start this in. So this guy played for Rangers. So he made just two league appearances following his £1.5 million move from Dynamo Kiev last season. Which oh, oh. Jones. What the fuck? <laughs> yeah. 
uh, go for Nikola Machenko. No, no, no. It's, it's the other uh, one. Uh, <laughs> uh, 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 what's my name again? Fridge? No, big, fucking. Big George, big, big George. George. Kuznetsov, Kuznetsov. Yep. No? <laughs> yeah. I, I, I'll give you all the Kuznetsov. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> so, 1-0 to Grado. Next one then, this guy played for Hearts. So, he made his league debut for Cowden Beath in 1982. And yeah, Jones! Played... Jones! Yeah, Jones. Right. Oh, no, me, French! Uh, George Edmondson! Jones! <laughs> right, I think I've got it. I'll, I'll go with Grado first, you, since you shouted your Right, I'll so. go for you first, and I'll, uh, right, I'll, and, I'll, and I'll be honest, right, and say if I was going to say that. You go first. Levine. Nah, that's not how I was going to say. Uh, right, okay, well, it's Craig Levine. <laughs> <laughs> ah, it's uh, one each. Daft, <laughs> man. One each, so, so here we Who go. Who are you going to say, Grado? I was going to say Davey Weir, but it's fucking... <laughs> I thought he played with Cowden Beef, but that would have been too early for Davey Weir, would it have? I don't know. Oh, Falkirk. Aye. Uh, it's Falkirk, man. Yeah, you're right. Right, okay, sudden death then. So this guy played for Motherwell. Um, it says, he's one of the most exciting and dangerous forwards operating in Scottish football over the last decade. Oh. In 12 yeah. seasons at Ibrox, he won three league titles. George, 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 I did say it first. I swear to God, I did say it first. Stevie, who got that one first? I'll give you the... Who got that one first there? That was quite uh, even. Uh, I'm going to say it first. Yeah, I'm going to say it first. Yeah, I'm going to say it first. But I don't know. No, I, I'm, I'm I'll, kind of... I'll be honest. I was swinging about looking at my telly and all, so I'm not 100% sure. I've right. got... Here, listen, I, I've got I it down because I'm not thinking of a striker. Right, I've, I think I think Grado, I think Grado, you did get in first, but on you go. Who do you think first. it is? No, nah, I'm not saying it because I'm too embarrassed now because I know he's not. Just say right, it. Right, say David it. Cooper. It is David Cooper, mate. Oh, yeah, <laughs> fucking answer. Is... I thought they were a winger. No, <laughs> no, no. One of the most. All right, oh, well, field does. Uh, exciting and dangerous forwards. So Grado takes it two one. I want to see you, Grado. I want to see you. Cheers, Stephen, big man. Listen, enjoy your PS5, biggie, and I hope you make a bit of coin. On eBay where you <laughs> And remember, get sorted out with your pies for the games this weekend with piesports.com. Now, please welcome to the show. He is the current Motherwell reserve manager, but he's played football all over the place. I must admit, this guy right here, I'm going to have it a wee bit, right? But Morris Ross, uh, I don't know, I find it. It's weird, right? Because we've got Boris Ross in the show, right? And I remember I, I watched you play for Rangers. In fact, I actually um, saw you at the front door at Ibrooks when you were a player. You were in your tracksuit at 20 past two. And I shouted, Morris, you playing today? And you shouted, you shouted no, right? Um, and I just... <laughs> <laughs> right? I'm I'm actually, I'm so... No. <laughs> but what I'm saying is you were like a... You were like a boy, you were like a wee boy, right? Mm -hmm. And then fast forward all these years and I see you and you talk well, you talk with intelligence, you've got books in the back run right now as we see. And I, I just see somebody that looks as if they're going to be a very successful manager and it totally blows my mind because the, 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 the perception I had of you as a, as a player and seeing you now, and I say, I'm all quite intimidated. I think you're like, you remember we had, who did we have on the show once? Big Rob Jones, and he would go on about, he would go on about how he was just dead serious about football. And, and I see it with Morris, and I love it, and I love listening to him. And uh, that's so we've got Morris Ross in the show. <laughs> <laughs> that was some intro. So I'm, I'm Do you like that? get books in the background. <laughs> <laughs> but you get what I mean? But is, is there other folk that are kind of taken aback? Like, because you're totally switched on, whether that's because you're, you're exposed quite a lot in the media, and there's other folk like you, but it is, it's a surprise. No, I think that, I think that comes with maturity as well. I mean, I mean, when you're 20 year old, you know, and you're in the Rangers first team, you know, you carry away with all the, all the extracurricular stuff, if you want to put it that way. But um, I mean, I've always I've always loved football. I've always been into football. I've always been studious in my approach. But um, listen, I think if we, if you look back on, I mean, if you look back when you were 20. You'd have been, you'd have behaved like a twenty-year-old. I mean, I'm coming up for forty, right. and, and 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 I'm like, as you touched on it, I'm totally dedicated and immersed with, within football. Um, and I, I'm, I'm just uh, in a good place. I'm, I'm coaching at a brilliant football club. How about you, things at Motherwell, Morris? How's it going, mate? What, the club's in a good place, and I mean, you get good manager, good players, young players. How's it all looking there? Um, 
Well, obviously, what you mean, you know, that we're, we're, we're fan owned. Um, mm -hmm. Selling players like David Turnbull and James Scott, you know, we're, we're debt free, um, which is which is quite something these days, considering we've only really got like 4,000 fans. Um, yeah, it, 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 Motherwell is exactly what it says in the tin. It's a mm -hmm. homely, nice club that look after their own, and we seem to be able to reinvent the first team every year. We, we end up losing eight players. We bring in young boys, players from down south. You know, we, we're always, we always feel like we're, no disrespect to the players, but we, we're, we're signing the raggy dogs. You know, we, we're signing boys that have maybe been injured or fell out of an academy that they've never really had a chance of first team football. And they come up here um, and they get coached within an inch of their life. Mm -hmm. And, you know, when, when you see when we sign players for the first three months, they're, they're like punch drunk because of the, the level of detail we're going into on the training pitch. Um, but when they get through that kind of three, four month period, um, they, seem to, they seem to really blossom and do well. Aye. Because right. as you look at the team, like, I mean, letting, we had Keith Lasley on the show a few months ago and mm. talked a bit about David Turnbull and stuff. And obviously he was like your crown jewel to a lot of teams and you look at him and he's such a talented player but a club like Motherwell how hard is that losing a player like that and then like, he, he he moves and then you've got other players coming in and stuff how hard is it to place him? We, that's our business model so we've always Aye. signed up to that mm -hmm. um, and we are actually delighted for the boy um, Aye. you know what we do is we offer an environment which is no frills but you come to work every day and you get coached and you get pushed and you get educated. Now, I'm not just talking about on the football side, but diet and you know, like, like any football club, but we Aye. take pride in it because that is our, that is our base, that is our currency. We've got to do that because we can't go and spend money. Aye. So Aye. We take pride in the education side. So you, you bring boys in that are quick or they're strong or they're six foot two and you, and like Declan Galka. No, Declan Galka is, uh, is a great example that he was at Dundee Went to Livingston, fell out of favour at Livingston so much so that I tried to sign Declan Galka to, to, to come to the Fair Islands two, really? three, right. three years ago. So I was in right. dialogue with, with Declan to take him there. Mm -hmm. um, fast forward two and a half, three years, and he's, he's, he's a standout for Scotland because he had raw attributes. We put him on a straight and narrow. We educated him you know, slightly, and mm -hmm. he's, he's now looking like he's, he's a first pick for Scotland. So again, <laughs> to go back to the losing David Turnbull, it's a celebration for us. Aye. Us selling David Turnbull keeps our doors open for two years. Aye, aye, totally. It's, 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 it's really small. So when we, we do that, you know, the chairman's happy, the, the, the manager's not happy per se, but we are confident enough that we can go and find another young lad. And by the way, we've got players in the building, Liam Polworth. Mm -hmm. For, the, for top clubs in England, then the Mate, he is he's he's technically so gifted, Tim man. He's a good good player, Paul Wolf, man. Every time I see him, he looks a right handy player. He looks so and, good with him. He's young. I mean, he, he's, he's young. I mean, you look at him, mm. think, he must be thirty three, but he's, he's oh, I mean, but there's a boy that's was at Inverness, was always getting his twenty assists a season. Mm -hmm. the body language was poor, or the the the, the running capacity wasn't at maximum. Come in, he has. Now, I've not seen we have this wonderful thing, but, but you come into us and, and the standards are set in stone straight away. You need to play mm -hmm. professional football, you need to run. You think about it, if a premiership midfielder at Manchester United, he's on the ball for a minute, maximum, a minute. Mm -hmm. So we talk about all this technical training, touches and touches and touches. Football's about decision making. It's about mm -hmm. running. It's about moving in sync with your teammates. Mm -hmm. So it's, 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 it's not just about was Polish because he'll always have talent. If you aye. drop him in the middle of Antarctica, he'll still show his talent. Aye, aye. You know, so it's about aye. harnessing what they've got with adding aye. certain other traits and, and characteristics. And that's, and that's when you can see boys like Declan Galker, Alan Campbell. I mean, there's Liam Donnelly. He's been injured this year, but he's another one that's been a revelation who'll kick on to, to big, uh, bigger and better things. So if you see aye. like a talented aye. young boy coming through, Morris Wright, and you see those issues with their their, their behaviour or they've got um, stuff that needs to be addressed in terms of their values and stuff like that and their etiquette within uh, playing football. Do you see that as a frustration or is it maybe a sort of a challenge for you to try and shape this guy into becoming the best he can be? 
typically we don't sign players with behavioural issues, Gredo. I mean, you can say behavioural issues is they're, they're not very nice people. That's, that's a behavioural issue, right? I but the, if their behaviours are, he's lazy. Now, that's, that's a trait as, as such, but Liam Polward could have been deemed to have been lazy when he was at Inverness, but he's actually not. It's just that we've <laughs> not had to focus on his talent because the talent's always there. We've, how can we make you better? I can't make your touch better, but we can make you fitter. We could educate you in the position that you play. So it's about controlling what's controllable in players' daily behaviours, but we wouldn't assign a bad egg as such. Aye. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's interesting, but like, I, and it's, it, this seems so fresh, but then it shouldn't seem fresh, you know what I mean, Bob? Like, it, it's cool, Aye, isn't, isn't it? Well, I, I think mm -hmm. you're the perfect guy to ask your thoughts on social media with other players. What's your thoughts on it? I feel sorry for them, actually. Right. Um, I think if you can control it, if you've got someone that controls you or, or you're of that level headed that it's okay to put you doing the gym and doing positive things, but sometimes the players get battered and they, they, listen, these boys are 23 to 28 year old or whatever, full of testosterone, fit as anything, can fight for fun and they've got some wee guy that's goading them or maybe not even one guy, it could be a thousand people that goad them into Right. In that reaction, and that's where I feel it's about. For me, if it was me and nowadays, I wouldn't be on it. I would, I would, I would come off it, and um, because there's nothing really good comes from it. I think if you do your talking on the pitch, you train well, you play well, you're mm -hmm. a good teammate, you're a good person. Aye. Well, I mean, what, Aye. I, I mean, I've I've read interviews with yourself in the past where you spoke when you were at Rangers. And sometimes the, the, the stick you got for Rangers fans. Yeah. Have you? Can you pass that on to the young players, like how you dealt with it, and give them advice? Like, would, 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 would that be something that you do? Um, it's, it's the thing when you play with Rangers or Celtic. It's it's it's, it's strange because you're 21 playing in front of 53,000. You go to a reserve game and there's 38,000 a reserve game if it's on Ibrox. Aye, aye. It's, it's that surreal for me telling David Devine, an up and coming Motherwell player, about handling crowd pressure. It's, it's maybe not the same. Um, however, if you keep your nose clean, you train well, and, and, you're, and you're, you're, you're a good teammate, and you're, a, you know, you're, you're, you're graceful when, you, when you're beating a team for nothing, and you're, you're, you know, you're respectful, if, you know, whatever. It's about teaching them. Day-to-day -day values. I think that's more helpful for these young lads with them saying, "How do you handle playing in fifty thousand? Because I couldn't handle playing in front of fifty thousand people. You maybe say that I did, but it's pressure, man. Oh, yeah. now, you know, that, just like that, that ball comes over you and, and it bobbles. Bobbles happen. You hear half of them, even a quarter of them, groan or mumble. You're oh, <laughs> and worried, especially, yeah. especially at Ibrox, man. Ibrox, I mean, I've been going to Ibrox for years. Grade was the same, man. It's no, it can be a horrible atmosphere sometimes if the game's not going Rangers' way. And it's, I can imagine the pressure on some players. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, but that's the beauty of it, though. No. That's the beauty of it. That that severe, intense pressure of, I better be good today. So when you are Aye. good, it's like that raw emotion comes through you, and then. Mm. Boom, you're 20 minutes after the game, that's gone, and you're now worried about the midweek game against Panathinaikos. So you're, you're, in, <laughs> aye, aye. you're in constant fight or flight mode. So, yeah. Aye. It's not natural, course, man. to be honest. It's what, what, how did you find it? Like, when you came to Rangers, obviously, like, working under Alex McLeish and stuff, what was it like initially when you came to Rangers, like the dressing room? Were you, was it quite daunting for you? Um, no, really, because, uh, and, and I've touched on this many a time in an interview, you're indoctrinated. For, like, I was indoctrinated. I was about, well, 13, 14 year old. Mm -hmm. So you, 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 everything, you're constantly mm -hmm. tested, constantly. And in the days, it was a wee bit more, how would I say it, colourful, the language the, co the coaches would use. And it was, and I don't want to go too much in, but there was all that stuff about, you know, everybody doesn't, everybody's against you. You know, you, you've got, everybody wants to play against this badge. It's a final every week for the opponent and all that stuff. So you're constantly getting, brainwashed into this and and we things that, that the club did you know the, the, the club used to have uh, friendlies on the astroturf directly opposite ibrox <clears throat> you know you've got, got three thousand people that are up and down there 
an hour and a half right. for kickoff. Then you've got people in the cockpit. Yep. Of it. Then you've got people inside the actual tough. So, you know, I mean, I'm a 14 year old playing against, playing in front of maybe two, three thousand people. So it's these wee things are there to put you under pressure. And by the way, there's, there's 14, 15, 16 year olds that can't handle it. Oof, they're out of the door. The next part. Right. It's, uh-huh. it's all character building, isn't it? Exactly, exactly. And by the way, I don't think it was, they stumbled across it. I think that was by design. Right, right. I probably, I, you're probably right, man. I've never thought about it like that. I've never actually thought about it because you, I mean, me and my mates go to games, man. You stand there and you watch a lot of the games that are on, and I don't think it that way. Do you know what I mean? Like you stand outside the stadium and you look at it, so it could be like that. Uh-huh. What about like, like when you go in there, Alex McLeish, like, what was he like as a manager? I, I was signed by Walter. Um, Aye. I always feel it's strange calling him Walter, but um, the, the gaffer. Um, and again, I, I was put into his room as, as, a, as, the, as the boot boy. Mm-hmm. Uh, so it was me and me, Pizzo. You must know Pizzo, you guys. Who's that? Is that uh, McDonald, me, Pizzo. Peter who? Peter McDonald. He played oh, aye, 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 aye. Right, so there was me and Pizzo. So there was me, the wee geek that was scared <laughs> everybody. And then you get Pizzo, the wee wido, you know, that would skive and they would... He would hide the boots that I had to polish, and I was getting in trouble. And oh, he was talking. <laughs> so I, I was put into that situation where I was in Watersmith's room, and I don't know. I, I, again, I think the I think like John Brown and John McGregor did that, so that I was in the coach's room, and they were on you all the time, making sure you were doing everything right, um, and just all these wee different things, um, just building your character. And by the way, they were right. brutal. brutal. Right. Well, I, I I believe this is where academies go wrong nowadays. Um, they, they try and make things so easy for every player. So so simple and so laid out and so sterile. I think to become a Rangers player, you need to be the 1%. So, so don't pander to the 99. Let's find the one. Let's, you know, and I'm, not talking, I'm talking for Rangers here, but I'm talking about any academy. Aberdeen, Hearts, Motherwell, Man United. Because mm. survival, football's no changed. Uh-huh. So I think you've got to put hurdles in front of people because the people that can get over these hurdles at 16, 17, 18, you better believe it at 35, 40, 60, they'll be overcoming hurdles because that's the type of character they are. So how did you overcome the hurdles? Because, I mean, uh, your story is you were a young boy for Dundee, you come to Big Bad Glasgow, you've got to deal with us, you've got all that pressure. How did you, how did you manage it as, uh, as a teenager? Um, a good, a good a kind of family background. Um, John Brown um, was, was was phenomenal with me. He was mm-hmm. he was my hurdle. He was my day to day hurdle. So he deliberately tested me, deliberately put me in the awkward situations. But again, he was always the one in the background that was propelling me forward. So it was like a paradox. Mm-hmm. Aye, so he aye. he was he aye. knew what it took to be a Rangers player. He wasn't interested in. 90% of the boys because mm-hmm. he, he knew that 90% of them never had the character they had the talent but they never had the character and this is what I'm saying is anybody that walks through the door at Murray Park is a talented footballer but who's the one that's got that great determination who's the one that's going to do that extra who's the one that does 11 push-ups when he's total to 10 who's the one that does 9 when they're total to 10 you can smell them a mile mm-hmm. and I think this is where we need to right. hold that we, we, we feel we have to pander to everyone but the, the, the stats go against it. Focus on the one or two that are going to get there and try and break them for day one. And because if you do break them, there are no Rangers or Celtic players or Man United players anyway. Mm-hmm. That's so true, man. That Maybe a bit so black true. and white, yeah. but <clears throat> it's, it's how Hi. I see that there's failings in, 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 in academies uh, across the country. But you, so, so you must have seen, there must have been... On you go, Gredo, mate. Oh, you go, Bob, you go, Bob, you go, Bob. I was going to say, there must have been, when you were coming through there and you're saying you're getting, that John Brown's kind of in the background helping you, you must have seen so many talented football players come through the Rangers that just didn't make it. Because so, much, no... so much, I mean, even, when I, I first went to Rangers, I was just turned 14, and it was, a, it was a friendly game. And boys like Robbie Nielsen, Jimmy Gibson, Billy Gibson, Pizzo, Stevie McAdam, all these boys. And I'm like, oh, I'm miles off these boys. Miles off it. Uh-huh. I'm not even close to these boys. And I, and I actually mean that. The boys are so 
gifted technically, far mm-hmm. far superior to what to what to what I was. But again, it's not just about I talked about it earlier, Gado, with it. Um, one minute, about one minute, one and a half minutes of Premier League midfielders on the ball, whole mm-hmm. Premier League team that's got the ball at the time, a minute on the ball. So people always judge talent on touches on the ball, passing ability. But me reading a situation where I can see the angles being cut off by the guy pressing the ball, which means I can change my angle. For me, that's a talent in itself to be able to visualize that real time and hit the moment. That's a talent. Mm-hmm. That's coachable. Yeah. That's what I do all the time and every day with my players. It's your chain of thought. You need to focus on your chain of thought. The questions you ask yourself every half a second. Because you, if you ask the wrong questions, you'll get the wrong output. This is what, how I try to coach every day. And, and did, the, did, the, did the dressing room bother with you, Morris, when you were a boy? Obviously, obviously so you had, you had, uh, you had uh, McGregor and Brown and stuff like that. But was there any players that you can remember that went out their way and spotted something and you went, right, I'm going to shield this boy, going to show him the rope, show him what the, what the score is. Have you got any memories of players where you went, oh, man, I thank him for that? Uh, Craig, Craig Moore was great. Neil McCann was great. Um, Barry, in his own way, was great. Barry was cruel to be kind. Never let you let up. You know, if you let up that 1%, bang. So... Inadvertently, Barry was helpful, but I think the, the guy that, that, that I looked up to was definitely Craig Moore, and Neil McCann was also, I remember Neil McCann in my debut, um, he played on the right that night. I only played 15 minutes in my debut at Dens, um, and he came short for me all the time, because the pitch was mm-hmm. kind of wobbly and whatnot, he came short for me all the time, and, uh, and I said, Neil, thanks for that, because every time I got it, I just popped it six 10 yards to, to Neil so it went as if I kept the ball do you know what I mean so it wasn't like Aye. under pressure mm-hmm. to to make a dribble or, or make a, a difficult pass um, so I always remember that for Neil I thought that's that's good emotional intelligence for Neil tell me about an old firm right your first can you remember your first old firm I do actually it was Celtic Park right and yes. and what's come on you're gone you're gone into Park he'd 60,000 Obviously, you know about it. You've been, you've been uh, smartened up to it. But what's what's the difference like for that game? You're sitting in the dressing room. How how does that feel? How does that feel for you? It doesn't feel good. It's terrifying. Um, Do you feel sick? Sick, nervous, excited. I mean, it's. Can I mean, you, go it? you you think about it, Grado. I mean, we're we're getting up at seven o'clock for a half twelve kickoff. We're eating pre-match meal at eight o'clock. You know, try eating past the eight o'clock in the morning. I don't mind a chicken curry for the night before. No, I've done macaroni. I've done macaroni <laughs> at that time. <laughs> but no, it's, it's terrifying. I mean, uh, I, that first game, um, I was up against Bobby Petter, and obviously there's Larsons and all these boys, Petrov and Neil Lennon and whatnot. So that, I mean, Celtic were a phenomenal side as well. Mm-hmm. Phenomenal. Aye. So for me being up against Bobby Pett, I just what I said was I can't get involved in anything other than Bobby Pett. My whole job was Bobby Pett. So it was just like there was a just like a, a laser on Bobby Pett. Um and lucky enough I get Sky Sports Man in a match and BBC Man in a match. I remember that. And I've I don't think I played well since. <laughs> <laughs> but, but I, I just remember, I mean I played at Celtic Park a couple of times and I think it was the one time I played at Celtic Park. I think the next time I played was the Scottish Cup final and we beat them 3 2. But oh, it was a time at Celtic Park where it was a half past 12 kickoff. And just before we went out, the manager was Al McQueen. We'd just call out the numbers. Um, and obviously, I'm, I'm starting. And I've just, he just went Amoruso, 5, Moore, 6, Ross, 7. I'm like, who's 7? Who's 7? I'm like, oh my God, that's Larson. Oh. And I just stayed away. I just because I, I remember I had two yogurts and two bananas for my breakfast because I couldn't eat pasta, right? Mm-hmm. And I just felt the water coming down. You know when the water comes down, it's the back of your jaw there. Aye. And I went in, sick as a dog, came back out, and I'm and I'm leaning against the the it was the old Celtic tunnel, and I'm leaning against the, the wall there, and, and my mum's got the game taped, and the 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 the, the, the reporter guy says, "Oh, and there's young Ross looking so calm." 
You're nothing a kicking on that I'm calm, but no, it, it, it's it's a whirlwind of emotion. It's 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 a crazy. Like I say, it's no natural. It's no natural to try and perform in front of sixty thousand people. But no, no, it's no. Aye, yeah. I remember the Scottish Cup final, man. You're actually you're you're on the forty, my boy. There, man. Just the Scottish there, Cup final, or was it the CIS yeah. Cup? <laughs> No, mate, this is the Scottish Cup final, the 3 2 game, man. After Barry scored the free kick, you're in the background running there to congratulate him. How, 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 does, it, how does it feel um, being hung up on Shell Suit Bowl for other cities? What is that? A, that isn't natural. <laughs> <laughs> That's not natural. How do you feel about that? A privilege. <laughs> you don't seem to be a guy that watches much River City, I don't think, do you? No, I don't think he is, mate. I actually don't watch much TV. I no, don't that wouldn't know. surprise me, man. That doesn't surprise me. Tell him, what do you do? What do you like today? I don't see he's a fisher. I can see you being a bit of a chef. I can see you walking yeah. about your kitchen with a wee glass of a Malbec or something like that. Is that your kind of? Is that what well, you like that, today? That, that I do. I do love that. I, I, I like. Um... I love watching documentaries. I Mate, I'm the oh, I'm your guy. I'm man. your guy. I'm your documentary guy. You I'm watching sure. the undoing now? Oh, I mean, that's what I'm saying. Mate, what did I say to you last night? The voice nah, note, the undoing. That's true. That is true. That's true. That's true. Mate, the un- I watched episode four last night, and I text. I sent Grado a voice note saying that's what me and my wife are sitting watching. It is really, f- it's good Terry, man. That's good Terry. The problem with the undoing is I've watched it kind of through goggle box. I've been watching folk on the telly watch what, it, so it's kind of spoiled. What are you doing, what you doing that for? Because I, f- I love goggle box. I love goggle box. It's just, that's just, that's just, that's just, no, that's pure well, passion. What's, what's your favourite documentary? I think. Of late, it would need to be the, the Michael Jordan. The oh, Jordan. mate, that's this. I don't think I've seen a better documentary than that. I don't. No, honestly, no, I, don't I have. The done. Jinx. The Jinx blows that out the water. The What's Jinx. That? The you. Jinx. Robert Dust. The the. He's a he's a he's a multi millionaire in Manhattan, right? And he says, basically, he has all the money in the world, but it never brings him happiness, right? It's so on HBO. What happens is he killed all these folk, right? Years ago, but he got away with it. So HBO did an interview with him, and what he does, he ends up grassing himself in over the six episodes, and it's tremendous. Wow! You need to what? You'd love it. You'd love it. That does sound good. Have you not seen the Jinx? Have you not seen the Jinx? No, I've not seen it, mate. No. That sounds pretty cool. By the way, have you watched the the Iceman, Richard Kukinski? Ah, I know. I've seen that. I've seen that. That is good. That I have. We not spoke about that. What was that one? No. Just when you're talking about in in New York and, and people killing each other. No, I mean murder, murder documentaries are my go-to. I love, I love murder documentaries. But that's what I can. So you like watching documentaries? Do you? Have you got any other weekend kind of hobbies? Do you like collecting anything? Or would you? you know what? I actually, I've just recently got a wee, uh, wee place just down the road. That I actually quite like um, doing up flats. I really enjoy that. Aye. This, we uh, had Andy Little, and he was saying that Andy Little does that as well. I enjoy the, the whole like designing it, and I enjoy it. Right? I don't like That's getting good. piles off the wall and no. I hate that crap. <laughs> <laughs> Enjoyed it. But, Morris, tell us, how did the move to Norway come about? Honestly, I went, I went to Millwall. I went down, down south, went to Millwall for, for a year. Um, and Jackie McNamara was just coming back for his cruise shoot, so I was there to kind of be, be the right back when, when he was injured. When he then came back, there was no enough... Uh, money on the budget for, for three right backs to be there. So I then mm-hmm. went to Millwall, got injured, just didn't take to the place at all. Um, and my, once I, when I got back fit, my agent says, you fancy doing something abroad? And I went, yeah, let's go straight away. Mm-hmm. And that was it, went straight to Norway, played at a, a good club, Viking Stavanger, finished third, played in Europe. Great experience. I think Charlie Miller did it, Robbie Winters did it, brilliant experience. Did um, you bump into Charlie Miller when you were in Norway, no? Pardon? Did you bump into Charlie Miller when you were in Charlie was there before I got there. So when I was going, Charlie was just finishing up, but Robbie was still there. Mm-hmm. Um, but obviously the way Norway set out, it was five hours on a, on a, um, by bus or by car and only like 25 minutes on, on a flight. So I only really seen him when we played them. Aye. A brilliant, like brilliant experience and any young player that's got a chance to go abroad, they should go and take it. Definitely. Is, is that where you could, uh, is that where you, beca- I'm just trying to remember, did you become a manager when you were in Norway? Yeah, uh, I managed for four years in Norway. Do you think if you still played here, that would have still been the case? That would have been the way your path went? Or do you think... Yeah. What took for you being in Norway? Like, Do you know what I mean? 
I think if I'd stayed in Scotland, I would have probably coached at the club I was at, my last club. You, you see that route into football all the time. I'd have been, say, I'd have been started taking sessions with the youth team and then I'd have followed that kind of route, I think. Um, but the, the good thing about being doing it on your own is you, you make your own mistakes being a manager. So you're kind of in charge of your own destiny, so to speak. So what I, what I did was I made a, a plan for myself. So I had four years in Norway. So year one, um, I said, right, I'm going to go and play 4 2 3 one. And then mm-hmm. once I understood the, the, the kind of intricacies of that, I then moved the following year, says I'm going to go 4 3 3. Um, and, and luckily enough, we got double promotion and, and uh, back to back. Um, and then I moved on to, to what's deemed a, kind of a more successful club in, in, in that league. Finished third, played 3 4 3, 3 5 2, 4 3 3 on the one year. And then when I went to the Faroe Islands, I said, right, the, the, the formation that I want to really now focus on because I felt like I had a good handle on 4-3-3 and 4-2-3-1 was 3 5 2. And yeah, so I've, I've, I've went away. I've, I've kind of been in boot camp, so to speak, because nobody cares about it. Right. Because when I came back, I, I won the league in Norway twice and won the cup in the Faroe Islands, people like that. So. Yeah. Aye, aye. But what I've done is I've, I've gained a kind of database of knowledge of all these different formations that when I went for my interview at Motherwell, it was, it was a 45-minute chat with, with the manager and Keith Lazar, etc., and then a 45-minute training session. Mm-hmm. So that, they, that six, seven years allowed me to go in at that, kind of, that, that, that invitation to Motherwell and, and, and nail the interview. So... That is how I got in the door because you don't get in the, you know, Stevie Robinson's not going to, he doesn't suffer fools gladly. So if you're not up to it, you know, I'm, I wouldn't have got the job. So I was really grateful for the, to get into Motherwell and you know, the rest history, so to speak. Do you know what? I, 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 I wouldn't be unfair and go like that. What do you want to do with your manager career? Because I know you're, you're still at Motherwell, but when I sit and I listen and, and talk to you, I think, man, this guy's got to be a mega manager. Just know it. You've got to be a mega manager. And I can't be the only one that's saying this, put your ears up. But, Maybe I'm or one day you'll go, ah, you know, it's Gredo that told me I was going to do it. <laughs> you know what I mean? It was then fat by Daft, man, and he says, man, I'll manage in the Aye. Premier League. But surely there's Aye. somebody else in your log going like that, man. You've got it. You're strict. You're a bit intimidating. You, you like documentaries. You cook. You've got all the gifts of the gab. You've got it. You've got all the tools in the locker. Uh, the, the fact that I've, I've have done it, um, even at a smaller level, it's still the same situations you're putting yourself in, just to be different. It's still the same skill set. Right now, I thought I was a good manager on the, on the five, six years that I'd done that. Um, but now coming into professional like level with Stephen Robinson, Keith Lazzi uh, and Motherwell, it's, it's more than just managing players. It's managing up. Right. It's managing expectation. It's managing fans. It's managing groundsmen. It's managing every single thing. And... If I, bec- I think football chooses you, Gredo. I really do. I think you don't choose it, it chooses you. So if I am performing at a level that someone sees me and deems me a right option in time, by the way, I'm, I'm saying in time because I've got, a, I would say, a, a, a duty to perform for Motherwell um, and the manager. And mm-hmm. if the right time comes when I'm 44, 45, whatever, and there's time, something opens up, then, then great. And if not, then, you know, I'm... I feel my abilities, my natural abilities on the grass and, and educating people. And I can I, I see you in a dugout, man. You're gonna be a you're gonna be a manager very soon, I think, man, definitely. And are we allowed to are we allowed to talk on the carry on with a couple of weeks on in BBC where you were on and you were gaining your opinions and then it ended up becoming a bit of um articles and papers and being brought up at press conferences. Are we allowed, are we allowed to talk about that? Um <laughs> <laughs> The did lawyers you, would say you, no. Did you get in bother? Because I think, man, you're only speaking the truth. I think you would be honest. It doesn't matter what team. I think you're just a brutally honest guy. Obviously, you've been maybe been told that. Um, it, it, it is. You're in a position traits. to comment, but I think it's. It is one of my traits that I, I do like to. I can sleep at night saying that I've given an honest appraisal on something. Whatever that subject may be, I'm going to be honest on it. You know, mm-hmm. I always feel like don't don't ask somebody's um, opinion if you don't want their opinion. Mm-hmm. But too often in life, I think people don't want your opinion. They want your opinion to be the same as their opinion. 
Mm-hmm. Aye, they, whatever your opinion is going to be, they've all, a lot of people vote, they've already got a headline made. It's the world we live in now. Whatever you talk about, me, me and Grady were talking about it a while ago. You speak to like the newspapers, whatever. We date it with, I date it with my job, Grady does it with his, you date it with yours. They've already got a headline made. Do you know what I mean? No matter what you say. And they just take out of that what they want to take out. And I think along with like, social media and everything, the modern day world is full of that now. Do you know what I mean? It's, yeah, so it's, it's up to me to me to, to, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm 39, I'm still learning what's right and what's wrong. Uh, Aye. So, Aye. Listen, I'm, I'm not by far the, the finished article, so like I said, if everything's, I'm, I'm talking to players every day about learning, and I'm still learning. So it's, um, it's a journey I'm on, and, and, I'm, and I'm just loving being, you know, back in Scotland on shows like this, being able to, you're giving me a, a platform to, 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 to show how I think and, and what I feel. So it's, yeah, I'm just grateful to be back and talk for you football again. Aye, I bet you, aye. No, I'd say, man, it's, I think it's, I think it's exciting. I think it's, I love, I, just, I love listening to him talk, do you know, Bob? Aye, aye, 100%, man. Probably the most intelligent guest with had on, I'd say, Morris, definitely. But, 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 but the biggest bluffer. <laughs> <laughs> What's that? Or the biggest bluffer. Aye, <laughs> maybe, maybe, mate. Oh, Bob, I'm sitting there, are you not going like that, Bob? You're not sitting there kind of going, could he be the Rangers manager one day, man? Ah, of course I'm thinking that. That's what I was sitting thinking when he was talking. <laughs> Obviously, man. Definitely. I mean, I mean, um, I mean yeah. what, do you, what do you think of the, obviously being an ex-Ranger, Morris, what do you think of the current, the current state of Rangers at the moment? What are you thinking? Um, I think it's as good as it's been since Walter Smith. Aye. 100%. Aye. I see, Definitely. I see, uh, do you, know, do you know when you know it's good at either one of the clubs, and I'm talking and, and, and I'm putting this out here, whether Rangers or Celtic, there's, there's, there's no noise coming out of Ibrox. Aye. There's no noise. Aye. It's just turn up, win, got the road. Turn up, win, Aye. got the road. No noise, no speculation. It's business. Aye. That's what it seems like this year. Mm-hmm. It certainly does. It, it does. It does. And it I don't know how you feel with it as fans. I'm sure you, you feel the same. There's a. No, I feel. Can I hundred percent, man, and it is. That's what we're talking about. I felt like this as, as Rangers fans. I don't think it's been as this like um, since two thousand and eleven. And it, and it's, the, the, the drama. There's no. There's no drama. You know what I mean? Aye. Every day, drama. You know what I'm saying? It totally Aye. Is. It still gives me the fear, but I mean, it is it's every week, man. I'm just. I'm so. Well, that's the beauty of it, though, isn't it? Aye, it is. It is, it is definitely. I was so, saying to Grado earlier before you came on. It's like McLeish back in the McLeish days, Neil days, where. Ding dong battle Celtic are playing this weekend and the Saturday you're keeping an eye on that. Then so, we're playing Aberdeen I'm the Sunday. About earlier, when I said about you've, you've got that twenty minute period after a game where you're you're elated that you've won, and then you go, mm-hmm. Oof, we've got Kelly during the week. Oof, right. Exactly. Week. So you, it's short lived. It's it's constant. That, that's what I always think about. See when I see that's what I get. Uh, Kind of freaks me out a bit when I watch Rangers right because the the, the momentum scares me a wee bit. Do you know that way where I'm like we're Momentum was good, but then I'm like, well, they be up for it on Wednesday night. Well, this be the same. Do you know what I mean? Is something going to happen? That aye, must be hard aye. for a football. Is it hard for a football player? Is it no? Because you want to win, but it's 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 every couple of days you need to be boom. This is a cup final this season. Do you know what I mean? It's mentally draining, and that, that's why you need a, a big squad because no, some players are not capable of playing three games a week for a season. Aye. That's what I think. If you look at the subs two, three, and four. They're good options all the time. I mean, yeah, we, we, we played Celta a few weeks ago. I mean, the subs were in Cham, Edward, and I can't remember the other one. And they're like unbelievable subs. And so when you're seeing Rangers, the subs are now <laughs> Morello sometimes. The four. Ah, exactly. It's, it's, it's proper, Riff. proper options. You know, you can rest Kent one bit and play Davis. You know, it's, it's fantastic. Yeah, so it's, uh, listen, it's going to be, it's going to go right to the wire. I really think it'll go right to the wire. Right, it I definitely is exciting. It, it makes it, it spices it right up. But Mo, it's been good talking to you, right? Before we get to the quiz, I want to ask you, right? So your playing career, right? Ten years down the line, right, when you're a manager and somebody asks you, what was your proudest moment in your playing career? What was the best I mean, remember your proudest moment, the best day in Fitler? <laughs> that question. Best day in Fitler. Proudest day. You know what I mean? I'm no being, I'm really, really no being a sycophant here, right? I'm not. But just 
playing for Rangers. Period. Aye. That was it. Aye. Aye. No winning cup Aye. finals. Of course, they're special, but just being there for eight years and being part of something that was special. That's for me, I never thought I'd play for Rangers. I tried, I hoped, and I did everything mm-hmm. I could, but I never thought I would. And then to then be part of it for eight years, it's something that's... Yeah, that's, a, that's a great answer. That's, that's, a, that's a, a great, great answer, answer, man, when you think of it. That is a great answer. It's a genuine yeah, answer. Man. It's not something I'm, I'm not Aye. trying to pander to people or anything. Uh-huh. I really know. No, totally, man. Totally, I get that. I mean, obviously, Rangers are a massive club and you, and you are part of a very successful Rangers team, man. So, aye. And there's no Definitely, many... Mate. I think the amount of players that come through and that's, you know, there'll be players that that's their sole goal in life. I want to play for this team. But no, no even that, because, you know, you've brought up a Dundee United supporter, but it's that kind of... It's like me... It's like, why do you know what I mean? Being in a programme and got we loads of... Like, say, for example, Bob, you go on the Sopranos, right? That... <laughs> that... Although that you've spent all the years in New York City, right? Just you saying you've been in the Sopranos, it's kind of like that, isn't it? Mate, 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 if I get on the Sopranos, you'll never see me again. <laughs> I fucking, I'm off. I'm well, off, mate. mate. It's a prequel coming, that's what I'm saying. You are like, ah, the between, you're like a cross between Joe Pesci and we Jimmy Cranky. So you'd be, you'd be perfect <laughs> in the fucking prequel to Sopranos. I can see it. Richie and Priel. Oh, there <laughs> yeah. we go. There we go, man. I'll, I'll take that. Well, All we... right. We'll end on that note, right? Boris, <laughs> <laughs> uh, every every week on Football Daft, we put our guest football knowledge to the test with our 90-second quiz. You up for it? Aye, aye. Right, we've got John Sutton and Chick Young are joint top with 15. Mark Wilson and Keith Lasley are tucked in behind with 14. Well, the good doctor, Kenny Joker and Kevin Harper are just behind in third place with 13. Other selected scores include Jonathan Watson on nine, Ross McCrory on six, Mixu Park Lining on three, and we've got the Falkirk manager and Andy Little, well, Falkirk manager David McCracken and Andy Little at the bottom of the league with one point. I'm terrible. You beat Keith Lasley, point. didn't you? I'll not beat Lasley. Lasley's, <laughs> Lasley's got unbelievable knowledge on. He's good, man. <laughs> he was good, he was. He was. He was. But it's 90 seconds, Morris, and you need to give an answer. You can't pass. Okay. All right, mate. <laughs> right. right, Ryan, you got 90 seconds on the clock? Yep, whenever you're ready. Right, you ready, Morris? Yep. Right, here we go, mate. Which league do Bristol Rovers compete in? League two. In which year did you sign for Beijing? 2010. Who is currently top of the goals and assists table for the Scottish Premiership? Tavernier. How many Scottish Cups have Hearts won? Six or eight? Six. How many different clubs has Maurice Ross played for? Fourteen. Which club did Alex McLeish manage next after Rangers? Birmingham. Who is the current captain of St Mirren? Uh, McGinn. How many points do Scotland have in the current Nations League group? Ten. What nationality is the new Rangers signing Bongani Zungu? Nigerian. Who played in goals for Rangers in that 2005 Scottish Cup final you scored in? League Cup final you scored in? <laughs> Vatarus. <laughs> From which club did Rangers sign that Genovo? Dundee. Who is the shirt sponsor of Motherwell? Oh, I better get this right. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Pay something. Time. 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 Oh. Give you a... Right, is, it, is, it, is it time to answer Aye, pay, yeah. pay, pay, ah. pay. Aye. Pay. What rhymes way? Cheer. Yeah. Right, Ryan, there we go, mate. What have you what what's the scores in the doors, Ryan? I'm gonna give him seven for that seven. 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 Right, so mate, uh, seven's no bad. Seven's what was bad. it was it cor- incorrect answers? So we'll go through them. So it was League One for Bristol Rovers, 2010 ah. for Beijing. You got James Tavernier. It was eight Scottish Cups for Hearts. 
Um, I had wrote down 11 clubs, but you are very confident at 14, so I gave you it because you know better than me. Um, Birmingham City, you got yep. Kyle McGuinness as the captain of St Mirren. Um, 10 points for Scotland, Bagani Zungu as South African. Um, you got Vatarus, you got Dundee, and it was Pay Care for the Motherwell shirt sponsor, Pay Care. <laughs> <laughs> Pay Pallet in my head. I know it wasn't. Uh, but... <laughs> you see what you've done there. See what you've done there. But, mate, seven's a decent... Seven, they got Ryan. That's all right. Seven's all right. <laughs> yep, seven. There you go, mate. You know what I mean? Listen to one, mate. You know what I mean? Listen to, like, David McCracken and Andy Little, mate. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> I mean... <laughs> right. Morris, honestly, thanks for getting up your time, mate, and coming home. Really, really appreciate it. Thank you very much. Mate, that was Morris Ross. What an episode. I just want to say, man, like for any that are listening, we obviously get players on every week, right? And we can have a laugh with them. And some of them could be quite intimidating, right? And it, it, you sit here and you shite yourself what you're going to ask. Are you talking a lot of rubbish? Are you, do you sound like a buffoon? That was, for me, that was mega intense. Know that I didn't enjoy it, man. I thought, I swear to God, you just said there, Bob the Note, he has, Morris Ross has got a presence. And I hope that gets oh. across to the folk that are listening and are going, check you to Shake bags fear. It's not that we were fear. He just did have that kind of aura about him. I didn't right? want. I did. I. I. I didn't want to sound like. I don't know. It was like you're going. This guy has got something about him, man. Where you don't want to sound like a clown because he was like he's driven. He knows what he's capable. Of. He knows he's been about the game. He knows football. He, he knows football inside out. See me sitting and through. And he's in the Faroes and he's in Norway and he's playing a 3 5 2, a 3 4 3, a 4 3 3. He's like, he's like kind of schooled himself in the game. Right. And I can't believe, like, no disrespect, like, but back in the day, Morris Ross would say to his tail, he was never one of the pure standouts. But now you're looking at him going, this guy's got something about him. Do you know what right. I mean? The most intense intellectual interview I think we've had on this show. I know, because, like, see how even I'm, I'm asking, you know, behavioural issues. I didn't mean, like, <laughs> Behavior. No, that was funny, I mean, mate. I, I, know, I, I know what you meant. Do you know what I mean? Like, and it was behavioural issues. We don't sign, and obviously, like, that's the way he is, and, it, and it's cool. But it's cool. Fair play, him, man. Fair play, him. Definitely, man. Motherwell oh, should be lucky that they've got somebody like that there dealing with. with Aye, like, definitely, he, man. Definitely. he is somebody. He's no. He's no too new school, and he's no too old school. I love the way he was going on about that, about the focusing on the one percent, and you know you need to survive. Oh, that was kind of spine tingling, man. That was quite I goosebumps man. material, that. Aye, I it was. was. But I mean, you're you're looking at it. You've with Morris Ross and Joe who got the tattoo. I mean, we've covered all bases today. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yes, sir. <laughs> I can and, my, uh, and Maria, who says you don't want to eat too much, huh? <laughs> Which reminds <laughs> me. Uh, <laughs> is she Italian now, eh? I, have, uh, I know, mate. I don't know, mate. Mor- Mor- Morris Ross has ended me today, man. <laughs> I also say as well that when re- see how when the, the one for backer come on right and I introduced her, I totally forgot the song. <laughs> I'm like, that. I went, Maria Mendiola, who is famous this week. Hello, how are you doing? I pure forgot the song, man. But Tolls missed a belt in a week, you know? Aye, he has, he has. Anyway, Aye. this is football daft. Ryan's been top left. I've been top right. It may not come across like this on YouTube or whatever you watch this on your platforms. <laughs> Thank you for watching football daft. Hit the like button, subscribe, download us. Give us a wee tweet and see what you thought about the Morris Ross interview because I'd like to interact with you on Twitter and see how we got on with it. That was uh, football daft with Morris Ross and plenty of other guests. Right there. Audio Frontier.